Well, hello everybody. What a pleasure it is to see you. My name's Simon Calder. I'm the travel correspondent for The Independent. And, um, well, I'm absolutely thrilled to be here. It's, um, it's great to have a booking so close after Christmas. Um, <laughs> But I, I understand why I, was, why I was booked. It was to bring some diversity to the stage, obviously, because uh, they needed a bit of youth. Um, anyway, I do have an apology, hang on, from, the, um, fr from Mick Lynch of the RMT for anybody who was hoping to use the rail strike as an excuse for not being here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's so lovely to see you. I'm so looking forward to hearing from a man who has for more than a decade, more than two decades, been our guide, somebody who has shown us the world in all its glory, who's effectively just campaigned for things that are really important to us, to lead us to properly understand the destinations that we are going to and all the amazing life that is there. So, like you, I can't wait to hear what Simon Reeve has to say. <laughs> uh, but we're also, I think, possibly going to be hearing from um, Paul Goldstein. Now, um, I know that a number of you know Paul. I, uh, I first met him, obviously, at a, over a, a bowl of tofu. Um, <laughs> he was woke before it was, um, before, bef before it was popular. Um, no, that's not true, actually. Of course, it was a meeting of uh, Divas Anonymous. Um, but let's just uh, remind ourselves about the... Uh, that the um, pursuit that he is um, engaged upon. People say downhill is worse than uphill. Bollocks. <laughs> there we are. I fear there may be some more of that tonight. <laughs> Um, as uh, those of us who know Paul, well, I did actually uh, first meet him in the 1990s. Yes, we were both alive. We were very young indeed. And since then, I've uh, joined various expeditions uh, to Kicheche in, in Kenya, uh, to Antarctica, and most exciting of all during COVID, to Norfolk. But <laughs> wherever you are with Paul, you know it's going to be exciting and interesting. And you know that um, he is possibly going to share his view of the world. And that's what we're going to hear tonight. And I want you to welcome uh, the uh, great Simon Reeve, who is going to be talking to Paul tonight. And I can't wait to hear their conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, Simon Reeve. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for coming along. It's very lovely to see so many faces here tonight, particularly when we were going to have as Simon alluded to, one or two travel problems, weren't we? But they've uh, abated. I knew you would make it here one way or the other. Yes, my name is Simon Reeve, and tonight I'm talking to my friend Paul Goldstein. And I have known him now for around, goodness me, about 10 years. Uh, as most of you know, he is a, well, let's say, almost indecently talented, award-winning photographer. He writes fluently and quickly, unlike me. He campaigns uh, appropriately aggressively. He's raised now hundreds of thousands of pounds for tiger conservation. He has helped to uh, rebuild and equip schools on the boundaries of an Indian national park that's famous for its tiger population. He co-owns four absolutely amazing safari eco camps uh, in the Mara Conservancies in Kenya, which invest in the local community, so important, and help to protect what I really think is, quite frankly, the Garden of Eden in terms of wildlife. He's a dad to two wonderful lads as well who are here somewhere, and he's run 28 marathons, for goodness sake. He has phenomenal energy, surprising in a man of his age, let's be honest, and he guides all over the world in the Pantanal, our largest tropical wetland in Baffin Island, Spitsbergen, Antarctica, and of course Kenya, where, full disclosure, I was with him just last week. Paul has quite the CV, I think we can honestly say. But the most annoying thing about him, at least for me, is he has this staggering memory. You know, I'm really deeply envious of him. He never forgets 
a joke, and all of them are burnished with a host of accents, as some of you will know. Most of the jokes are completely filthy and hopefully unrepeatable in these august surroundings. I will try and control him. Who here has been on a guided trip with Paul? All right, I want hands up. Good, there's quite a few of you here, aren't there? Yes, good, okay. Well, you'll know then, he can be completely mad, don't you think? First time we went out with him, he was bloody shouting at us, shoot it, shoot it, shoot it! But honestly, he shoved and encouraged me so quickly from being actually pretty hopeless with a stills camera to being halfway decent, I would say. I can't imagine, in truth, there is, <laughs> frankly, anyone who could help improve middling photographic skills faster. He is genuinely and he is wonderfully enthusiastic about sharing his skills and his knowledge. I think we've got a photo of us here. Look, that's us in Kesheshe. Just last week, when I go out with him, you know, I get photographs that I can, I can put on my wall, for goodness sake. Some of my photos when I've been out with him have been published, believe it or not. And that would be nigh impossible, I think, without his energy, without his guidance, without his encouragement. And yes, all right, without his banter as well, okay? If you've travelled with him, you'll know that along with the shoot it, shoot it, you also get this endless stream of banter and jokes, uh, often from very early, often from before six o'clock in the morning, which I think should be banned. He's a complete nutter, but he's wonderful, wonderful company. He's a big-hearted, and he is an exceptional photographer, and he is, quite frankly, a conservation hero. You know, rather than just sitting back and watching the planet going to waste and snapping away while we lose our iconic species. He's put himself through physical torture on his old man body, trying to raise awareness and money to save our tigers. So that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. Personally, I have never seen a tiger in the wild. I've been quite close to them. I've just looked at their poo, to be honest, in Satpura National Park in India and in Siberia as well, so I'm really hoping he's going to give us some pointers. But let's find out more, okay? Why has he put himself through such pain and such injury? What's he done, and why has he done it? I should say the first time I met Paul, he was interviewing me at a, uh, a travel show, and the shoe, obviously, is on the other foot tonight. Am I going to be able to control him? I doubt it. It's my go anyway. Let's see some of Paul's escapades first. We're going to play a video, and then we'll get him out, all right? Let's see if it works. I said at the start of this campaign, that was it. That was the end of it. My 51-year-old body can't keep doing this. You only get to do it once. I think it's true what they say that the dream is borrowed. You give it back tomorrow. Minus the sorrow. I get disconsolate sometimes, I get impatient, I get angry, I get depressed. That gives me this sort of significant rage and, 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 and drive. I just can't keep doing this. In fact, he's done 20 in 12 years in the Tiger, and this is the paraphernalia yeah, for the music. Yeah, very important, mate. You think of those? Oh, wow, um, I just really like those. Come on, Sally. Thank you. 
bonkers, quite frankly. Absolutely crazy. This ludicrous uh, exercise, I'm going to call it that. in his late uh, 50s be wanting to do this? Well, because during the course of his marathon running life, he's raised thousands and thousands of pounds for tiger conservation. These kids, like tigers, are worth a lot more alive. Thank you, thank you. It'll never be perfect, but you have hundreds and hundreds of school children now who are reaping the benefits of not only Beckmore Tigers, but also your generosity. Running a marathon is one thing, running it with a costume like that, or indeed like that, wow, that's incredible. Is that the tiger that came to tea? Well, I tell you what, it's going to deserve a big mug of tea at the end of this marathon. I've wanted a design was the people concentrated on the suit rather than the um, miserable runner inside of it. <laughs> I mean, the two words, Everest and Marathon, should not come together without substantial punctuation. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Is this a foolish escapade, this caper? Yes, I think it probably is. Is this the most challenging thing I've ever done? Yes. Do people look at me with that look, what on earth are you doing at your age? Yes, they do. It's time to run and walk, and scramble, I suppose crawl, 26.2 miles down from base camp. Jai, drink a champion! Thanks guys, nice to run. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Paul Goldstein! We'll do it again. <laughs> Careful! <laughs> All right, so we're going to have to crack along because we've got lots to talk about. I've written down lots of questions because that's what people do in these situations, don't they? <laughs> um, I think we should go back to the beginning. All right? I know you want me to ask, where have you just come from? All right, I'll ask that. Where have yeah. you just come uh, from, I've Paul? Just, I think you've given the game away a bit there. <laughs> where, yeah, I've just come from... I've just come from Kenya, but it's, it's great to be back. And also a full house. Just a quick one. How many of you would have come if the unions had got their own way and struck? Just a show of hands. Yes. Oh, right. Thank I you. Would have okay. Come. Just in case anyone thought we would have, we both agreed we wouldn't surrender it to some anemic online uh, nonsense. Uh, thank you very much for that support. I know some of you made quite a few sacrifices to be here. I All hope right. it's worth it. Now, Paul, we've covered where you've come from. Have I forgotten the clicker again? No, I'm not letting you anywhere near it now. I, I told you, don't <laughs> let me near the clicker. It's not <laughs> yeah, you, my area. Yeah, you said we've got trouble with time. You blew three minutes, just like that. <laughs> Schoolboy error. I know it's your first time, yeah. Um, we want to go back to your... Be I want to go back to your beginning. Anyway. Just give us a quick bit of context where you're from, your family beginning, all right? Yeah, well, family here tonight, but... Um, yeah, I was, I, I'm, I'm a Londoner like you. I was born in London, brought up in the Garden of England. And I think people think you're a photographer, you're a guy that has, travel is my thing. I, I've been in there a very, very long time. 
uh, and, but it, just in, in many different um, forms of it. And you were almost a club rep, weren't you? Yeah, not almost, not quite, but a different life. Yeah, a long time ago. You're enjoying this, aren't you? Uh, oh, yeah, the, 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 yeah, the yellow polyester shirt, yeah, the airport duty, the whole stuff. Yeah, uh, uh, late 80s, you know, just before sort of drugs took over in the Mediterranean. Yeah, it was a life. It, it was. The only reason I got a house now, I think, is you know, I worked, worked what did hard. Did you say last week? Where, where did you start out? Because there was the money there. Was it, it wasn't uh, yeah, Mallorca, South Coast. Was yeah, bad. different life, different person. All right, doesn't make oh, me a bad. Okay. It doesn't make me a bad po Well, it did a bit, but um, uh, <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, it was. And then I worked in the mountains as a, as a ski guide. Uh, so the whole thing. And it, by the way, what did you think? You saw the photo of my first marathon? The bleached hair, uber tanned. Yeah, that was about the size of it. Uh, yeah, and I just realized I could not do that forever. You, know, you see 60-year-old ski guides. Um, so yeah, I decided to grow up a little bit uh, and do things when more did seriously. You, when did you first start taking pictures? I think early 90s first started, and then I moved to a company that had no pictures at all. And so it didn't matter what you took, you got them published, which was kind of nice. I'd never had anything published. And then I got a front cover of a brochure that probably had a circulation that almost bigger than The Independent. Um, so it's about a, 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 and, um, He's not it, got it a microphone. Was, <laughs> and, um, but you were self-taught. Yes, yeah. Yeah, I really was. I think that's pretty impressive. Uh, what, do you just Only fell impressive. for it? Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the most extraordinary thing. It's not heart yeah, surgery. Yeah, I, I, I think I did go on one course, and I was there for... I, I don't think much of uh, sort of focus groups and courses, and glib courses and meetings and all that. I don't think you ever achieve anything with them. So I went for 10 minutes, and I thought, well, I'm not going to learn anything with this. Right. Um, and, yeah, I think... With photography, I think with a lot of things, um, with writing and photography, you've got to be absolutely savagely critical of your own work. Otherwise, you're just not going to get any better. That's why when people show me photographs and they say, you know, I've graded them, I, say, oh, I don't really want to see their two stars. You know, I want to <laughs> see the fives. I might make them two stars, but um, it, it's, uh, yeah, I, I think you really do have to be uh, So what brutal. did you, what did you start taking photographs of? Animals like? in Africa. From the beginning? With, yep, with an old Minolta camera uh, and, um, and a very when it's you all say second in hand. Africa, yep, this in, is when you were on overland yeah, I, trips. Yeah, I was guiding a bit, and I was working a bit in the UK, and, and yeah, I, and I really enjoyed it. And but then you were doing overland trips. From yep, overland trips. Where, and from where? Botswana to South Africa. Botswana, Zimbabwe, South Africa, Kenya, Tanzania, um, all over, and I loved it. I really, I think I'd worked for a mainstream company, and then suddenly I was working for, you know trucks and camping and also I thought hang on this is the proper way to, to get your fingers yeah. you know actually through as you know better than anybody uh, you, if, you're, if you're staying in corner rooms in the, in the Carlton or the Hyatt you, you're not really going to get a feel of a country oh, it's at hell. all yeah. 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 yeah it is yeah. All right. uh, so uh, when did you ask Bear Grylls he'd, he'd when, um, yeah. <laughs> when did you think oh that feels better um, when, <laughs> when did you think you didn't deny that did you yeah go on um, when did you think yes I'm a wildlife photographer was there a I point? don't think uh, no, but was there, a, for us, just play along, though, when, was there a point when you uh, felt... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think um, in 1999, I got a photograph in the Sunday Times uh, right. of, a, of a leopard cub on a piece of granite. I can still remember it now. It was taken on an old Fujichrome. Uh, with, I'd bought a, a second-hand a heavy lens. God, it was heavy. Um, and suddenly you're beginning to get something. You're looking down the viewfinder, and when you get the films back, they were saying, yeah, that's kind of what I saw. And when... That was published. I thought, well, that's, it, I can't drop below that. And right. so then I started thinking, and I think I got paid 80 pounds or something for it. And I, I, was, I was thrilled. Uh, I really was. Uh, so, yeah, that was kind of the, that that was was the kind moment. Of it. But, yeah, I mean, once uh, we went to digital, nobody makes a load of money from publishing. I, I think I get more satisfaction now that if the newspapers use the words I write rather than the, the pictures themselves. All right, so the way we're attempting to make this work, although I've already ballsed it up, clearly, no, is Paul no, is no. now going to control the clicker, yeah. and he's going to show some photographs at various points and no doubt talk us through extensively, and I will try and restrain him, probably fail at it. Yeah. But at some point tonight or tomorrow morning, we've all got to go yeah. home. I do know um, that, all right. And we're going to build inexorably to, to an auction and, and the climb as well. I, I, just permit me a, a, a conceit, because whenever I lecture, you always get a certain reaction from certain types of photographs. So it's uh, obviously uh, pertinent that we that we start with a Bengal uh, tiger. So, so we're going to show just... some of Paul's favourite wildlife shots yep. first, I think. Okay, All right. so firstly, if you can just get the cute, cuddly, schmaltzy thing out of your system. So we'll start with that one, but you've already seen that one over there. And then... <laughs> you soft lot. I, I, I can I see you. the picture. I, I'm I on you. I can see it. I would have said okay. the same. Okay, and... 
Oh, oh God. Okay, guys, uh, it's quite a serious subject, subject tonight, so if we can get this out of your system, um, oh. uh, that, 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 that would be better. Oh, my goodness. Please. Um, okay, now, it, no there is serious, so not too much more of this. Uh, and, uh, uh, okay. Um, all right, okay, so, right. <laughs> I told you it would work. You say, what do you mean, Paul? They said, no, no, honestly. Uh, okay, it, they do elicit those feelings, of course they do, but um, you know, of those subjects you've seen there, two of those are critically endangered. Uh, and that's something you know, we're going to be uh, discussing. So here are just some favorites, and it's nice to just a couple of bylines. There's, there's, there's something with uh, taking cliches. When you take a cliched photo, like an arboreal leopard, you know, it's, it's got to be something a bit special uh, to get the attention. So when you have a leopard in that sort of light, with a cub, a clean tree, I, whenever I hear leopard, the pulse always goes up, as it does. How many of you are obsessed with leopards here? Hands up. Uh, okay, it should be more than that. Uh, and um, I am absolutely, I hear leopard, tree. I, the first thing I ask is, as a photographer is the tree, which is a bit unfair. Um, but if it's clean like that, it, it just means everything. This as well, this was something different. It's a, it's a moonscape. We hired a helicopter to fly over Lake Magadi, and for some reason, uh, near the Tanzanian border, we said, oh, flamingos, plural. And there actually weren't very many uh, at all. Uh, but actually, the, the single one made the photograph rather. I don't like clutter. Uh, sorry to sound like Chris Packham, but I, I don't like clutter uh, in, in photographs, uh, something that, that, that confuses the eye. So the cleanliness uh, of this shot um, works. It's almost like a moonscape. That's a silt deposit um, on, on the lake shore. Now, this one. I generally don't like the sort of visceral nature um, of, of photography. This was different. These are the five cheetah boys. Not anymore. It was an Is that why you've put it in black and white? Um, no, than... because it wasn't far off um, anyway. Um, it did clean it up a little bit. But with the, these, this coalition, m oft uh, filmed, as I'm sure you've seen, um, you, you know, there's never any, a, a perfect wildlife photograph. Although, any of you see that snow leopard shot today? that was over social media from uh, near, near Everest. Oh, my God. Honestly, uh, just uh, not now, but um, if you, if you want to have a look, I, I've that's the shot you would like, like to have got. I, I've done snow leopards three times. And, uh, in fact, Ryan is here somewhere, we, you know, the closest inside a mile at minus 27. You know, oof, dear. Uh, what and your, tell you, what's your favorite animal to I don't have a photograph? I don't it's have, oh, to photograph. Uh, to photograph is, is something different. I think probably cheetahs, because they give you the most. They're a daytime right. animal. Um, but I don't have a, a, an actual favorite. I don't feel well, your hit rate is higher. To, hit rate is higher with, with cheetahs. Easier to find, um, not as elusive of leopards. Um, these ones had dropped out of the reserve where they would have been accompanied by far too many vehicles and come into the conservancy. There's just two vehicles. And, and they knocked over this young, um, this sub-adult. Hold on, beast. hold on. Just, Let's just explain what a conservancy oh, is. A conservancy where, where you have controls on vehicles, you have off-road driving is permitted, not penalised, um, and you have 350 acres minimum per guest, and you just don't get the ghastly scenes you may have seen on social media of a, you know, a single cat being utterly surrounded. But most importantly, the money is audited three times a year, and it goes to the local communities, all the stakeholders benefit. So anybody staying in, you know, at least a third is going into the local community. And it is absolutely the future. And I hope it's a model that is replicated. I think it is, it is a model. You've seen it yourself. Yeah, I have with my own yeah. eyes, and we've and talked about it, it a lot. So Paul has and co-owns four safari lodges in conservancies. Camps camps in Kenya, okay, and it's not just the money going back in. How many people are employed? How many well, we Maasai started with, are employed? We started with six, and we've now got about 170, which is probably about, when you think dependencies, uh, over 2,000 livelihoods. So, yeah, it's a lot. Uh, it's never enough, you know, you always look to... And there's lots of different things. I want more girls walking, working for us. We have more than we used to, but there's many things. Um, this makes me happy as a photograph, because uh, it, it looks like a drone shot. Uh, it, photography, wildlife, drones, game of drones, not a fan. Uh, uh, but it was so wet that I just took a gamble that they would knock this thing over, and then they'd drag it. So we parked about 50 meters ago, away, where it was vaguely dry, and they just dragged it right next to it. So it was just a question of holding the, the camera out. Like Five-star meal, uh, I think we called it rather cheesily. Actually. You do a lot of Let's reading animal behavior, yes, don't you? Yes, yes, I do. When we're I out like there. behavior. But look, Packham would like this shot, clean. Um, this was very simple. This was, uh, you, you know, you take a gamble. All, all photographers should, should gamble. They, they should be prepared to, f shouldn't be prepared. Uh, they must be, sorry, prepared to fail when they photograph. But when you have king penguins on ice, 
uh, and you're lying down, and it, you, you, that's just an exposure trick. You overexpose it, it cleans it all up. That isn't even processed. You know, it doesn't need to be. Uh, it's Two just stops clean. overexposed? Two, yeah, very is good, it? Simon. You can't I'm hold learning, progress. I'm learning. Uh, goodness me, no, no, two stops Drilled over. It is. Yeah, well, well done. So, yeah, it is. And the human eye likes symmetry and diagonals, so it's it's all there. It's not perfect. You can see um, the ones here rather misbehaving. Uh, <laughs> Uh, penguins not as obedient uh, uh, as they should be, but it's it, pretty close to it. Though, yeah, it's it, it, it's decent and it's clean, uh, but you know it doesn't matter. <laughs> I tell you what, it's Dean. Are you here tonight, Dean? My my, my picture, library. Dean, mate. Um, I know I send you these sort of photos, uh, my dear my picture library, who are long suffering for like twelve years uh, uh, or more, and. Um, and I say, look at this, it's beautifully exposed. And he says, yeah, that, yeah, great, Paul. Yeah, it's beautiful. And he humors me and indulges me. But he knows the papers won't go anywhere near it. And I sent him about five different stories coming back three years ago from South Georgia. And, uh, and then I sent him that one, and they, everybody wanted a piece of it. Uh, and uh, Because there's any number of things wrong with that photographically, but it has the... Uh, the oh, no, the we of, love it, though. Uh, yes, yeah, so I know. The, the, the sort of Forgive humanism, us. the anthropomorphic uh, cheesiness that, uh, that newspapers... Uh, that newspapers like. Uh, it, but there, you could almost put a bubble. He doesn't like the exposure. He doesn't like uh, whatever. King Penguin in Rightwell Bay, uh, there from, I think, about 2017. This one, however, was so something very different. Um, this is in, in northern Canada, extremely cold, about minus 25. And this is a yearling attempting a flash climb. Uh, and it took... <laughs> I mean, we were so cold. We saw this, and we saw it trying to get to his mother or something like that, and I could barely get the camera out. And then when I got it out, I didn't put gloves on. So I took... That's one photo of God knows how many, because my finger stuck to the, <laughs> to the shutter release, and it just kept going until the memory card was full. Uh, and, and that's a, a sheer climb. So the, 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 the youngster is about a year old, didn't really move very much at all. So uh, I, I... And there was no way of... You can't format that card. You have to just delete all of them. Except the best one, but yeah, sometimes you do have to sweat, or in this case, you, you have to uh, hurt for your craft. Uh, you really do, and sometimes it's it's just beautiful. And when you press the shutter, you realise you're capturing something which is delicate, a desperately precarious ecosystem. As I was photographing this, I was on the radio to some other zodiacs. This is in uh, Hope Bay on the eastern side of the Antarctic Peninsula, and I was like, guys, you've got to get here. There's this diamond, and the light is... And then they're saying, Paul, where are you? Well, I don't know. Uh, we're just sort of <laughs> in the, the ice iceberg. somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. I'm by the iceberg. Paul, there's about 800 of them. Um, it was an extraordinary But this is, unusual, because this is the only landscape picture you've put in here, isn't it? Yeah, to me, um, you know, when you take a photograph, if, if two of you take a photograph, uh, if you and I last week, uh, of a cheetah or a leopard or whatever it is, I mean, really, people can be incredibly pious about it. I, 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 heard, I saw someone write the other day, I'm not a photographer, I'm a capture of light. <laughs> Nobody says that. <laughs> really? Well stopped. Please, sorry. Well uh, sorry, stopped. sorry, I know. Uh, your audience, not mine. Uh, uh, but, um, yeah, I mean, I'll tell you what he is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just extraordinary. It's not. We take the same photo, you blow it up 10 by 8, you know, this size, and I just hope somebody looks at mine longer than yours. doesn't mean it's better. It just elicits a strong opinion. Um, and that one does. Yeah, there's no such thing as a perfect one ever. I've never scored any photograph at 10. Uh, because that could do with a couple of penguins on the top there, or <laughs> two or three dropping off there, or come on sliding down there, or porpoising in this gorgeous turquoise water. So, yeah, the moment you think you've done it, you've got nothing more to prove with the camera, throw it away, take up another hobby. Uh, this, is, this is my sort of style. It's not everybody's. I love slow shutter speeds because the moment you put your shutter speed down, you, you realize that you might be, you're taking something no one else will have. Now, this one was, um, <laughs> this was on a little yacht. Uh, some of you have been there on this, this lovely little yacht, 12 berth. And I actually took the, the lowest uh, porthole out. I unscrewed it so I could get really low. And then these humbacks were putting on a show. And this was that was, when you were in the toilet? Uh, it was. <laughs> yeah. I, not, There's no way out of it. Not on the toilet. Yeah, not on the toilet, yeah. You went that, into be the wasn't it? toilet. Um, yeah, OK, so yeah, I was going to say it's a slow pan, but that doesn't work either, <laughs> does it? Um, um, uh, and um, look what you started. Uh, uh, anyway, um, it's, it's glacial water, hence the jade colour as well. And I just put it on a fifth of a second, because I'd taken loads of fast ones. Uh, and it's, again, it's not everyone's cup of tea, but when you do that, you get a gamble. And that one isn't spot on, because I, I could do with the, um, this being a little bit sharper here. The water's great, I like all this, but it doesn't God, quite work. Lazy. That one does. 
uh, you're looking at the, the, the fastest animal in the world. It was a desperately gloomy day. Uh, JW, I think you sat at the back there. You were right next to me, taking this at about 8,000 ISO, as fast as you possibly could. Uh, and I just thought, no, let's slow it down. And, and yeah, it was a handhold one. The next shot, sadly, was of JW's back. Uh, as the thing sort of cut round behind. But just explain to non-photographers here yeah, what, very you're, simple. what you're doing. You, you, you just try and move your camera exactly the same speed as your quarry. That's it. With a, show, a slow yeah, shutter speed? Yeah, that was about a... Yeah, so you... 25th of a second or something. It wasn't quite that low, but you, you don't ask much of your camera by doing this, but you ask an awful lot of yourself, and it, it takes, you know, reasonable size stones to, if you've waited for hours and hours and hours to try it, but... It is just a photograph. You know, the most important thing here is that this mother of, it, and that stage, four 11-week-old um, cubs got something to eat, which it did. Uh, and as I'm no, not interested, once she's not good over, we drive off. And actually, a circle of vehicles watching them feed, it's slightly unedifying, unseemly, but it probably keeps the hyenas away as well. Mm. Um, so it's difficult. But that sort of style is my thing. Now, this is in the UK. Uh, this is in uh, Snettisham, the RSPB uh, sort of stronghold flagship uh, on the Wash, North Norfolk coast. I spent a lot of time in those hides, particularly during COVID. Uh, and this essentially is locking the camera in, in the sort of vents. It's like the, it's like the sort of victory. You've got these cameras, uh, the lenses going out the side and just jamming it in and going as slow as I love and just not moving at all and hoping that the, these ones moved here and then the oyster catch has stayed still. So that's your photograph. You take that fast, you don't get any of that. Uh, it's just a bonus. And similar to this next one. OK. Uh, OK. Now, this is, this is what I call the root master. This was really early in COVID. You remember, we all had an hour. And, and, and most of us, I'm glad to say, except government ministers, stuck to it. Uh, and uh, absolutely, I worked out uh, that the moment um, you know, somebody got up to make me a cup of tea in the morning at 5, that was generally me, uh, and uh, I had six minutes to cycle to the Three Kings Pond in Mitcham. Uh, it's not generally when you think wildlife, uh, you think Mitcham. And I'd seen this, these, this pair, the cob and the, uh, and, and, and the lady had had, um, uh, had signets. They had six of them. And so I took a lot of photographs of them. But what interested me was the juxtaposition of the, the, the bird and, and, of course, the, mm. the, the, and particularly the, the HGVs. But this guy... Honestly, is, I've never seen a swan like it. Were you it. there it, waiting for a bus? No, it wasn't so much that. Uh, but I had 45 minutes. But you were minutes. waiting for red behind? You were waiting yeah, for that? Yeah, absolutely. Or, or? I had the reflection. But then when it sat up right next to the road and then walked across the road and stopped the traffic, I mean, <laughs> it was extraordinary. And then it came down, I thought, to get the photograph, I've got to get in the pond. Right. So the next day, I came back with a tripod, stuck the tripod in the pond. I was like, this, Steve, in the most foul smell. Sounds like Morgan Freeman. Fire football fields are the most foul smelling. It really was. But what made it worse is there was a couple of drunkards who hadn't gone to bed, who were sort of feeding the, 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 the other ducks and swans with their burgers or something that they were eating, and then saw me in there. So I thought it was more fun to sort of throw their burgers at me, but also understand. throw the bread near to me so that the birds would put me off. So again, right. I had to put it on a delay because, uh, and then hope the bus would come past, but then lower the sluttish speed, and then hope the cob would stay still. So you need quite literally, we always say, the duckling's in a row, in this case, the signet's in a row, uh, to make the photograph. Um, I entered that, actually. I gave it to Dean, I gave it to you. It got nowhere uh, uh, at all. But anyway, it makes me happy. And it gives me some vaguely uh, positive sign from, from COVID. Like I say, this is two days ago. Um, and these were exiting from a... Uh, a water hole, and it's very easy to, you know, it's not hard, zebras are extraordinary levels of contrast, but I was much more interested in the movement as they, there was a hippo at the far end of the water hole. It was a man made water hole, uh, which is good, the conservatives put this water in, there's a lot of drought in East Africa, so it's critical. And there's one hippo that's living out its days there. And every time that they'd come in and drink, and every time, every few moments, the hippo would snort or belch or fart or crap or whatever it was. And each time it did any one of those bodily functions, the zebras would run out. So I just followed it at a, a ludicrously slow. I, I, is that did anyone like that? Show of hands. No. Yeah, okay. I like about it. Half, it's not, it's you not like my it? favorite. About half. I'll yeah. take that. Not your favorite. Uh, okay. And look what, cameras, as... look what cameras can do these days. Um, that's a combination of camera, Milky Way at the right time of year. Um, I'd done some gardening the afternoon before uh, as well to make it clean. And then um, these three, who are all my staff, just uh, being paid a few hundred shillings to keep still for five seconds. Uh, uh, and um, and, and you, you get your photo. But there, there's something sort of vaguely symbolic. That's what these cameras can do now. Uh, and it just shows you must be prepared to work some long hours. 
Yeah, I mean, that looks as though it's charging right down the barrel. It wasn't, not at me. I mean, if I jumped out and got in the way. Um, but yeah, it was very, very wet. And it's a black rhino. It didn't like the storm. Uh, as soon as I arrived, this is at lunchtime, as soon as I arrived in camp, I saw this. It hadn't rained for two months. I thought, let's get out there. And went straight out. And um, it heard these two buffalo males. They were fighting. They were knocking the boss, and it really didn't like the sound. Uh, so it was already enraged by the storm. So it wow, just they're straight. easily annoyed, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, 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 they are easily annoyed. These are black rhinos. Mm. And also, a magnificent um, horn on that What one. is your favorite part of the planet to um, take photographs in? Oh, very, you pick one? very simple. Here in the Kenyan conservancies and South Georgia. No, Is no, there part no of the planet you wish you were taking pictures in? Then? No, no, I think I found. You've got the sort of dream Yeah, list. I mean, I, I love Antarctica as well because it's always different. Spitsbergen as well because you take a photograph on mosaic of sea ice, it's always different. Um, so, yeah, that's what, that's what excites me. Uh, but, yeah, I, I mean, there's lots of areas I love. And often it's species-led, like jaguars or, or Bengal tigers, of course. But, yeah, I would say those ones... Um, yeah. Look, South Georgia, apart from the history, which fascinates me, mm. uh, it really does. I mean, Everest and South Georgia, if any of you have just, just sort of meandered through the exhibition outside, I mean, it's extraordinary, the levels of fortitude of those explorers. But also, there's six million king penguins there. You know, that, that's a decent start, isn't it? Just numerically. So, yeah, the, I, th I think those ones. Yeah, um, that was a different story, points. wasn't it, Dean? That one did rather well. Um, look, there's sometimes... it's. We'd been with those cheetahs seven hours. It had rained all of those seven hours. It would have been very easy to turn back and go inside, and no, not at all. And for a moment, the mother advance stopped, and the two, and I just had time to close. We worked out it was about an eighth of a second they mm. held for that. Uh, so the rain, and yeah, I know, there, there's any, any number of things people have written about this photograph already, and yet yeah, all I can see as a photographer is this arbitrary piece of granite here, which really... <laughs> Bothers me beyond measure. But you do have this almost supernatural ability to wait until that critical moment and get that bloody shot. It's yeah, well, infuriating yeah, I mean, when, to be with you. <laughs> well, but the second I stop or move away, that I can guarantee they'll move like that and then you'll go boom. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's practice and it's experience. Uh, and also, I feel like a pig... I'm probably not allowed to say pygmy. I'm not allowed to say anything these days. I'm going to tonight. But, um, uh, and um, the, my guides put me in the position. You've, you've, you've been with Patrick. Mm. You've been with um, any, any number of the Suruni, any number of these absolute magicians. Uh, but it, it does make a difference. Uh, but in this instance, yeah, I, I'd, I had barely taken a photo in seven hours because it was grimy and it, it rained on and off. And so I was still primed. The moment, as you say, the moment you take the foot off the gas, I, I'm sure, you, you know, if you, when you're doing a piece to camera and you nail it, you know, they like the West Wing walk and talk, and you've done a minute and a half, and then you mess up at the end, because you just switch off for a second, you're quite right, that, mm. that, that's when it happens. Uh, and how much one say, uh, this sort of feeling, oh, I'll fix it later. No, 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 get it right when you press the shutter. I mean, in, a lot, in a lot of these photographs, uh, at the moment you're taking this, you're also, not all of them, but many of them, you're guiding Yes. people as well, yeah. aren't you? So you're not just there, mm. not just I often there have the radio here. Uh, I mean, I'm not telling gags, or well, not all of the time, but um, you, you know, you've got to keep people awake, but you can't mm. always be talking about photography because it's dull. You know, just photography, then give, I, w I want people to... And the more you understand a subject in any form of photography... I, I always say, when you guide with wildlife, it, 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 don't, forget the camera for a moment. It, I think it's my job to, to work ridiculous hours, um, 18, 19 hours a day, to, to make sure you make everybody's chances the absolute best. You maximize that time. Because uh, if you're not doing that, you're not delivering. How people then choose to record, whether it, what their precision object they choose, whether it's Swarovski's, Leica's, or a camera, or just their eyes, that's down to them. Mm. You know, it's not just, it is just a photograph. And unless you're prepared to put in that grunt, you know, and then it's a combination of experience, pedigree, field craft, patience is not a virtue, it's a must. Uh, and then, of course, there's the other stuff, which is, is a bit of luck, but mm. you're not going to get the luck without all of that. Yeah. And then, of course, pressing the shutter, a little bit of knowledge, your finger fusing with the shutter release, is, is that's 5% of it. So it's all of that which then leads towards... So it. hundreds you, of people every year you're taking away hundreds, and guiding. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you ever get bored? No. No. No, I don't. Oh, do I get bored of, 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 of you guests? You can interpret it that way. Um, no, I mean, you know, you, know, you can't have favourites uh, in my job. I mean, they never ask foolish questions or anything like that. <laughs> but do and you, you know, they're fair game. 
On, when they say it, you can't mention it on that trip. The moment they've flown home, they're fair game. <laughs> because you always say it was on a, uh, My two current favorites from Africa are that elephant all on his own over there, is he lost? Uh, I, but, <laughs> and do the wildebeest only cross on a Monday? Uh, uh, I, I, truth, uh, we always say this, truth is always stranger than fiction. Uh, let's move on, sorry, because that's two days ago. Uh, Helen, you're at the back there. I know you are, there you are. Uh, just, uh, Helen was in bits. Um, Helen, in 2009, um, arrived on a safari with me, announcing that she'd done nine safaris and she'd never seen a leopard. It's nice when you're put on the spot like that, and they, they don't put pressure on you at all. And that evening, uh, she saw a mother with two cubs, and she was a quivering wreck. And her obsession with lep leopards continued, and two mornings ago, we found this is named Tito, this one, and with two of her cubs. So yeah, that, that was a good moment. It really was. And look, very, it's quite, yeah, leopards again, but this tree we call the tree of life, um, it's a beautiful uh, bossier tree, and for 14 years I've driven past it. I've seen lions up there and I've seen cheetahs up there on numerous occasions and I've never seen a leopard up there. Uh, and um, my youngest son, when I arrived in Kenya two and a half weeks ago, he said, I want to go over to, to this camp. And uh, you know, I wasn't in the, you know, I'd been away and I said, come on then, jump in the car, let's just the two of us go. And boom, there it was. And then it got a bit better as well. Uh, mm. It really did. Um, so thank you, Lucas, uh, uh, for that good tip. Uh, it really was. And just lastly on these, um, look, talking of patience, that is 20 minutes before the sun got up. This is four days ago, uh, okay? And that's 20 minutes after the sun went down. Okay, I didn't take anything in between. It doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, you're pretty you... insistent on a 5.30 leave, aren't you? Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, I'm big on and, timekeeping. And it does matter. It does matter, particularly when it's dry. Uh, if you don't like getting up early, that's fine. Uh, I mean, if you're going to be late for game drive, it's not like I'm going to climb in. You just in. won't see it. I'm not going to climb into you <laughs> uh, 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 at all. But you won't. it's not a question you won't see it. You won't see it. It's... It's best, mm. particularly with cats. Uh, and likewise, exactly the same thing. This is in the 24 hours of, of daylight in Spitsbergen. That's the fifth excursion that day by Zodiac. And we started at 4.30. That's around 11 o'clock at night. Um, and Go on, zip they were on their knees. Gonna... The, the, the expedition leader had never done three, but um, yeah, you need that time. So it is. And lastly, of course, yeah. yeah. Oh. I, I still smile when I see this because this was the first time I said, how long have we waited for this, Papu? And, and he said 20 years, and he was right. This was May 2019, blisteringly hot. You need a lot for that to work. They need to be, have eaten something, but not too much. The water must be not too deep. Uh, and they're both males, so they're the what similar What do you mean sort of, you'd waited 20 years? What, to I've get never the, seen. That perfect? I've never seen. Oh, it's not perfect, but uh, it's, it's maybe a good. seven, six. Uh, but um, I've never seen them like that, uh, uh, pl playing in water like that. All the water's been wrong. You're too far away. They're facing the wrong way. The light's rubbish. Uh, there's distractions. There's clutter. It's not the best background by any means, but... Yeah, it was, it was desperately exciting. So you're uh, beating yourself up about them, right? Okay. I always do. All uh, right, so yeah. do, we, we've got to start talking yeah, about yeah. tigers. Yes, we do. Okay. Let's um, talk. Why tigers? That's my first... That's my first um, Bengal tiger. Sorry, it still hits me between the eyes now. In 1998, I took that in Rantambore National Park. Um, I arrived, and the guide picked me up, and he asked me if I'd, I'd like to um, go to the... Go to the lodge and what? Freshen up. I never really got freshening <laughs> up. Uh, uh, I've got a few regulars here. They're used to this. They're used to this rant. Uh, and um, so I said, no, certainly not. And so we got a route around the buffer zone. I wasn't expecting to see anything. 15 minutes in, we rounded the corner, and he's, he's lying in the, in the road. And, and I was just utterly gobsmacked. I, I had no... I mean, this is a huge 250 kilograms of male. He does look surprised to see you. A little bit, yeah. I mean, that is a problem. Often when you photograph cats walking towards you, their mouths hang open, they look gormless. Sorry, they're beautiful, but they look gormless. There's no need for it, really. They need to close their mouths when they walk. You've, uh, you've mentioned yeah. that. That yeah. surely does not look like a tiger. That tiger does not look gormless to me. No, that one. It's the, and the reason it did that, it was fast asleep. And I was, I was, and I barely breathed. And then I remember just scratching my you chin. You woke him up. Yeah, I hadn't shaved for about three or four days, and I just scratched my chin, and, and just that slight abrasive sound, it just looked up, and I took one photograph. I only took three, and then it got up and moved off, and it just had the most profound effect on me. And I was there Why? for a while. I don't know. I, I think I'd read so much. I think I'd been before for three days, only saw tracks, you know, right. and delighted to bump into people who keep, kept telling me you should have been here last week. I always like that. Um, <laughs> breaking the wild, the faunal pledge. Uh, and, um, yeah, and the reason is a very simple one, Simon. When you report from around the world, the, of the many things, you all watched his last program, haven't you? Yes. Yeah, he's, yeah. 
He's good, isn't he? Um, uh, I mean it. Uh, and the most important thing is you don't duck the, the, the I suppose, the, the subjects that many would. Um, the reason this really affects me is six months later, I was back, and I found out that the pelt was on the back of somebody in China. The bones had been used somewhere else. The penis somebody out somewhere else. The whiskers, the whole thing. And that's what started everything, frankly. So if I hadn't have seen that, if I'd freshened up, who knows, probably hmm. not, not be here tonight. So, and then it's a, just a, a series of, that's the first photograph of a Bengal tiger I took that I was reasonably happy with, because the background's good, it was taken on film. But most importantly, that's the girl uh, in the meadow, the Chakalhara meadow in Bandagar, that the suit was based on. Now, Eliz, are you here tonight? I didn't think she could make it, the extraordinary designer, but not only did I send her that photograph, I took her to India. I wanted her to see one. If, if Ben is here, he okayed it. Uh, and, um, and so she could actually see one in the wild. Before so she Liz the is the designer. She designs extraordinary, a genius. She costumes for the Notting Hill Carnival, doesn't yes, she? Yes, that's and right. Yes, absolutely. And you found uh, her and you said, I want you to yeah, make me a suit. Yeah, that's right. And she, I said, I can't afford it. Why don't you come to India? And she said, yeah, that'll do. Can I bring my sister? And she's... Um, <laughs> She's uh, absolutely lovely. And, and she did it, and she has been extraordinary, because I have bought that suit back from Athens, utterly battered. Uh, and bruised, and somehow she's given it an MOT. But, but more importantly, she got why we were doing it, and she's so supportive. Um, uh, she lives in Norfolk, and, and yeah, she's extraordinary. So before, we, before each marathon, I drive it up there in a van, and she gives it the going over. This is the first time I saw a uh, youngster, uh, and we'd heard one warning call miles away. We drove 40 minutes, and then just as the sun was going, the mother comes out with a young, and that, of course, you know, when you see youngsters, uh, like, the, uh, like the shot over here, up for auction later. Uh, uh, it, um, as yeah, is the painting. That, that, that you, as is. Oh, we should talk. Yes. We should yeah, know. we're going to. Um, yeah. So that leaves an effect. This one, How, I like. Can, can you go back to the one before? How close are you? Oh, uh, that's to them about. In this, in this uh, shot? No, no, that's not that far. That's probably about sixty meters. Uh, sixty uh, yeah, meters. Yeah, still. Yeah. yeah that's, that's still quite a distance. We, uh, Richie, are you here? Richie from Lenses for. Yeah, yes. he's in the corner. Of it. Hello, Richie. From Lenses for Hire, very good place to get your camera kit, I have to say. Nice plug, Richie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I was with Richie last week, and he had a dropping off cameras back to him and equipment. And you had, was it a 700 millimeter lens that you had there? 800 millimeter lens. <laughs> and it was like a, a sort of RPG. Yeah, a sting to missile. Me. Yeah, yeah, it was an astonishing size and weight. And you just said so quickly and fluently, oh, yeah, that's what you take if you want to get close to kingfishers and tigers two animals that you either can't get close up to or it's really not entirely mm. safe to. You can't be in close proximity yeah. with tigers, can you? Really? Yeah, you can. You've got um, a distance to absolutely them. Absolutely, you can. Unfortunately, the way it is in Indian national parks, you can't drive off-road like you can in a conservancy, so often the water holes are a good distance away, so um, it's absolutely uh, correct. My point now is most predators now realise that... that People in vehicles providing their behaving uh, mm. are the last thing. They've got many more important things to worry about, like putting food on the table. So if a, if a tiger walks alongside the vehicle, well, I'll use my phone or something just to film it or just enjoy watching it. There's probably not a photograph to be had. Something like that, you need uh, a slightly more grown-up uh, But often piece of on a, saf a photographic safari, you're further from a tiger, aren't you, really, generally? On average, than you would yes, be just, from I a think big cat in, in Just down to the nature of not being able to drive off-road. Uh, right. I think that, that, that is going to... But you to still you. have obviously formed quite the deep bond and emotional connection with them and I just yeah. would still love to know what you think that might be as a result of because other yeah. animals are poached and eaten and I think perhaps and traded stories reading Kipling having Kipling read to me as a child I don't know um, I think it's the anger and rage uh, definitely I feel it more is it the that. animal because it is uh, I don't, an don't astonishingly have a, majestic creature, it, Yes, it is. It? Uh, the first time one of these looks straight through you like that, it, it does have an almost uh, a visceral feel uh, to it. But um, I think it's the anger. Uh, when, you know, as we'll move on in just a second, you'll see some photos which, which are going to horrify you. And, and the thought that this goes on and still goes on mm. just enrages me because this is the dream. You know, look how close that is. That tiger, that tigress doesn't look remotely bothered. Um, that is me there. I'm not photographing. I'm just looking... And yeah, what a peaceful photograph that is. Hmm. And that very much says it's well-constructed photograph. And do you well. remember where this is? Uh, this Which is Bandavgar, yeah, A route uh, in Bandavgar. I remember <laughs> it well, 2011 uh, in March. Um, yeah, I don't forget moments like that. I was very pleased because I've taken a lot of photos like that, but it's not 15 vehicles, it's just one. It's, it's just a good moment. There's my dear friend Papu uh, in the driver's seat. So that's the dream. 
Um, and that was just one that, that was lying very close to the road. But we had the engine off. We, we drifted down with the engine off, just opened its eyes lazily like that, underexposed, three stops. Uh, and um, yeah, it was, it was simple. Uh, it, it really was. So those are the sort of ones. And then sometimes you get moments. Uh, the human eye likes symmetry. This one obviously works. And I tell you, you think, are you in any sort of danger? Well, not really. And they know you're behaving. Look at the conspiratorial uh, wink uh, out of that one there. It's just giving you a little... Um, it's, it, it, it makes you feel happy uh, like that when you get I don't, that. I don't think you're in any danger. I mean, certainly last week, we were yes. almost as close as mm. you are to me to... Yes, it was, excuse me, Large terms. lions large walking lions. past yeah. the open side and of the truck. That's so true. They, 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 they see... Um, the open-sided Toyota Land Cruiser, yeah, custom-built, thank you. Is fine, uh, uh, yeah. But um, uh, it's, um, they see humans and uh, vehicle as, as one entity. And yeah. it is that, you're quiet, they really don't, you know, they don't even glare at you. Well, if you're using a Nikon, they might, but um, uh, it's, um, <laughs> you, you get none taken. Uh, but um, yeah, that's, a, that's the sort of way you sometimes feel. And, and this was, I like this because it was the after, they, they closed the parks in India in the afternoon uh, and on a Wednesday. I don't know why. I mean, it's, um, it's, it's conservation terrorism, which I loathe. Uh, somebody once said, oh, no, we should do it to give the animals a rest. You know, tourists, they, you need that, those dollars from tourists to, for animals to thrive and survive. Uh, and so, but there's one place you can go in a buffer zone. There's not much chance of seeing anything, but there really was. So I was very satisfied. That was last May. So uh, it was great. And, and I just remember that day uh, we'd arrived and it was the morning after I had to get them, because I was, it was only two weeks before the marathon, and I had to get them to turn on the lights, because it's 42 degrees when that was taken, um, turn on the lights in the lodge so I could go training at three in the morning and run around and round and round for an hour and a half, then have a shower and drink lots. Freshen I think up. 14, freshen up. Uh, 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 and uh, 14, uh, I think 14 liters I drank that day, mostly mango lasses. And then we got that in the afternoon, so it was a joy. First time I've seen him. Trevor, Dawn, you're in my vehicle, sat right in front of me there. Um, we, were, we were literally having kittens ourselves. I, I, it was. Uh, and, and yeah, th this trip had, had we'd, we'd, you know, it all paid extra to, to have the, um, uh, the, this permit you can get to. You, you can't do it in Rantable, you can still do it here, where you get an all zone pass and you can go in 15 minutes earlier. This huge concession you pay a lot for. Well, this was the 15 minutes earlier. And for about 10 minutes, we had a mother and four of those. <laughs> and do you know what? And it makes you think, yeah, do you know what? This can work. They're never going to roam, romantic notions of, of animals roaming what over the What do you mean this is what's going to work? Well, that all the money you this raise, if it's properly model. spent, that if you're seeing a, a, a mother raise litters like this, you think, yeah, you know, this really works. Uh, it just does. And you think maybe as more and people are invested into the national park, but um, you mean tourism providing habitat it's almost? It's critical. Uh, and someone once put it very simply to me, if you have a family outside a national park, they see tourists go in in sleek four-wheel drives, they think, well, I'm not benefiting, you know, my mother's sick, my father can't get a job. You know, mm. the father now can get a job as a ranger, and there's money coming in to buy a mobile ambulance, which is what we've raised money for in the past, and you think, yeah, this, this can actually work. So, yeah, it's a big you know, when, when we were in the Mara Trust gift shop last week there was a yeah. there's a poster there's a dusty shop run by the Maasai uh, just near Paul's camp uh, and there's a poster up on the wall and it's a picture of an elephant and in Swahili underneath and it says in English as well it says employment dot 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 because of the wildlife and it feels like that the model you've got in Kesheshe which is not repeated everywhere else, but it, that, that's the almost gold mm. standard to aim yeah. for. They don't have that in the Indian National Parks, do no. they? They don't have anything remotely they don't. like it. No, no, there's, there's, there's plenty wrong. Uh, you're not given a choice. They don't have control over anything there, and they need to address that. Um, mm. They absolutely do. Uh, if people are feeling sufficient benefit, of sufficient financial warmth, off their striped neighbours, they're going to look after them. It's very simple. If schools are being built, you know, I list all the things we've done there. We'll they're, go they're, through it. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. Get yeah, to yeah that, but but uh, it makes such a difference. It does. Uh, that's why you need um, six, seven hundred millimetres of lens because that's a long way. Uh, and that male just, yeah, we've been to that waterhole. What's a, few a long times. way? That's probably a <coughs> hundred metres away. Yeah, so to, to close it, that's still cropped. But to that's close a hell of a like camera that, as well. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it was, and it was a very, very um, warm day that day, but it, yeah, it was, a, it was a good day. It really was. So, yeah, I, I, I feel happy. Thank you for those. I, I feel happy about those. I don't feel so happy talking about the next ones. No animal should, e no tiger should ever look like that. Okay, that's a Siberian tiger. It's kind of difficult to, um, to determine that. 
That has been what so... What do you suspect has happened? Now, that's in breeding, uh, in captivity. Look at the arch in its back. Mm. It shouldn't look like that at all. Yeah, I mean, it's physically re mutilated, really. Everything is conditions. wrong about that photograph. The, the tracks, uh, the, 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 the body posture, um, and uh, the fact that it's a Siberian tiger that should be living in the wild. It's not. It's living in a, let's call it a holding facility in China. Um, these are, it's not, it's illegal to kill tigers for profit in China. It's not illegal to let them die. I, I don't know how you even put a cigarette paper between those two specifications. It's nonsense. Uh, it just is. Uh, and that is the sort of freak show you get. You can pay an extra $2 to go to one of these and throw in a turkey or a chicken and they'll hunt in a prime. Where are these pictures from? From China. Yeah, but who's taken these? Uh, this isn't a client you, is of mine client, who right. went out there specifically taken. She took some for me. And yeah, it's just desperate. Uh, and it's wrong. It's patently wrong and this is worse. Uh, so there are your tourists who are paying for a cow to be put in the enclosure and for tigers so they can take their kill shot. Let's be clear, abundantly. This is where the problem is. Any of you saw that documentary four years ago, I think Aldo Kane's documentary on, on tigers, and he saw frozen tiger cub carcasses in Thailand en route to China to be sold in the wet markets of Wuhan, markets that were opened just six weeks after COVID started, whether it's pangolin scale, bear bile, tiger bone. Um, yeah, it's, it's just so utterly wrong, and they are poached for these reasons. And it's simple arithmetic, uh, it really is. We don't want to see our tigers living in holding facilities like this. But I, most of us, Paul, most of us who see these photos, I mean, we're, we're outraged, we're upset, but we don't actually, in truth, do much about it. I think you've said people who go and take a picture of an animal and imagine that somehow saves it are just thinking and talking bollocks. Why... Why, how have these motivated you to become so angry? Well, what is well, it? Well, it's something about that. you. You've got a lot of anger maybe in you. But yes, a lot. Uh, and, and I'm, uh, you know, there's anger every morning. I wake up fueled by it. Um, but um, uh, it, it, you know, there are many subjects. Uh, and anger always has to be tempered. It has to be challenged. Um, and challenged if it involves... And it can be a good thing. I, I, of course it can be. Uh, I think involves, we can do with a little bit more anger. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. You know, but people often ask, what should you do? Well, you start always by writing to your MP. When uh, most of Africa was closed down during the latter months of COVID, an absolute nonsense, while all of the Rift Valley Africans, people were utterly mystified why an illness that was barely affecting them at all was bankrupting them. I wrote to my MP a lot, 433 times, actually. He didn't reply... <laughs> He didn't reply to all of them. I invited him here tonight. I don't think he's here. Strangely. Uh, 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 at all. But, you know, it, it did make a difference. Uh, and you should. But, you know, every time you think, oh, shall I look, yes, I've had death threats for, for, for stuff I've done many years ago in the, in the past. Uh, and, you know, would I do things differently now? I don't know. Um, I just don't. Because unless you channel it, but unless you do raise your head above the parapet, we're going to lose these animals. We're going to lose them. Uh, let's be abundantly clear. Elephants we're going to lose, rhinos we're going to lose, and tigers will only live in a few uh, national parks. So yes, you, you do have to, to do that. And, and by the way, if anybody thinks that you know, what I'm doing is, is you, you know, you, you, I always use the term heroes. Every time you feel really disconsolate, every time you feel utterly desolate about things, I think of the heroes. Now, a lot of those are in anti-poaching patrols. Uh, all over the wilderness. They're, they are utter heroes, often very much undergunned and undermanned uh, against extraordinarily advanced poaching techniques now used. But it's not just that. Let's take it broader from wildlife. You want heroes? I give you those Iranian schoolgirls. Oh, my God. I mean, you think I'm doing anything. Those are utter heroes. Just think, these are going against live ammunition from misogynist dinosaurs masquerading as morality police. These barbarians have no place anywhere, and these schoolgirls are still protesting against them to try and wrench themselves up into this century. You want heroes? I give you those. I give you Bridgeman in China. I give you those students um, in Burma who are leaving school and then going immediately into the jungle to train to fight against their disgraceful military junta. You know, there are heroes everywhere, and when you associate with them, you know, your anger can be channeled. Uh, it really can. How bad is the situation for uh, our endangered animals? You're, you're out there seeing them 
fighting for them, campaigning for them. Yeah, when Can you, you see that, that's Tiger it? wine, by the way. It, it is. It's, it is bad. Uh, the statistics I hear, for example, in South Africa, they won't be... The Cambodian uh, tiger has just gone extinct. Gone. Three subspecies of tigers have gone in the last 20 years. Um, I think tigers will survive because there's enough tourism and they will live in a few units, but not much what more. What do you mean there. by a unit? Uh, sorry, in um, national parks or reserves. Yeah. They're not going to live in buffer zones anymore. There's, well, the there's, there's some hor horrific statistic, like there are more, in, there are more tigers no. in Florida now than there are Yeah, there are, in, in the wild. India. And also, when you hear the story about... There, there's always the, 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 the optimistic story. Let's run a story with... I, I saw one about five years ago that Nepal's tigers have increased 30%, and there's not many tigers in Nepal, mm. and four of the principal females uh, all had cubs. Uh, so, yeah, it was a fairly simple arithmetic, really. Easy to spin a story like that. Also, the censuses, I'm very dubious of, because I've seen them at work, you know. Oh, look at those tracks, you know, there's one. Oh, there's some more tracks. Huh? That might be the same animal. Mm. But, you know, they massively they overcounted in several Indian parks. Yes, they did, time, and no one's they? allowed to talk about it. And, and it is very difficult. And, and um, look, my, my dear friend, um, Mohan Taku, who none of this would have happened without him. He is the guy who managed to shift money, uh, and a local operator that par excellence, one I've never worked with better. And I know Arvind, his son's um, here tonight. And we always fight about this, but he also realizes there's only so much you can do as an individual mm. in India. You can almost do more from abroad. But w will we have rhinos still in Africa? Uh, still in South Africa? No. No, they'll be gone, uh, I'm afraid. Um, that is worth, powdered is worth more than cocaine, worth more than class A. Uh, and so that rhino is intrinsically, this is an old pegeta in, in Lycipia, and this is a success story for rhino. Uh, but, mm, yeah, they are so valuable. Dehorning hasn't worked. There's many different ways. Um, in the same ways of, as, as elephants as well. Simon, you'll recognize that photograph. Hmm. Uh, you were there, and you were, you know, for half an hour, neither of us said a word. And this is a two-day-old elephant. And, um, yeah, I know, it, yeah, you should. Uh, it, it's a wonderful thing, and it got more and more exhausted and eventually just collapsed, didn't it? It was like Bambi on flopped. ice. Flopped. It, yeah. it flopped, didn't it, like Bambi on ice. And, and when you see elephants in the wild in conservancies and you see this, you think, yes! You know, there's, there's, there's an actual, you know this can actually work. Uh, it really can. And uh, this is our first... Uh, this isn't mine. This is Simon's photo. This is Simon's photo. Um, yeah, sorry, I, I, hang on. I... Uh, Sorry, I felt I, I had well, to. I, I felt well, they were clapping. Yeah, I felt I had to beg them? a bit there. Uh, but um, no, 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 no. It is beautiful. But um, excuse me. <laughs> what has this uh, young thing ever done to you, Simon? That you cut off its trunk? I so, don't I mean, believe I did. No, no, no. You lose five points before you even start. It is. It's, it's a great shot. Nice clean background. Not straight, but uh, nice uh, 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 oh, clean I background. A uh, little out of focus. This one here. But no. But apart from that. Uh, no, Can it I is. speak, Paul? Yes, yeah, go on. Go on. Sorry, mm -hmm. I was going to say, I think with this, I remember I did go for a quantity providing quality approach. <laughs> I was like, click, 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 yeah. click. I took about 150 photos, I must admit. But it worked. That's the no, beauty of digital, a, isn't it? It is a beauty. Uh, this I, want to talk, we want to, I want to talk about tigers, right? And, mm. and back to the point where you suddenly felt or thought, I can't do this. I can't just keep taking pictures of them. I've got to fight and campaign mm. for them. Was there... Was there a moment? Tell us about the genesis of yeah, Work More Life. Yeah, I, I don't think it's quite an epiphany, but taking that one photo in the dark, it was like, I finally have the, the signature photograph. Uh, and then I just thought, no, um, it's not enough. I have heard so many times, oh, but the photos are doing, and they put them on Instagram or, or wherever they put them on their websites, and they think that's enough. Photographers think that's enough. Are these so-called photographic guides? Oh, and take this, and they take a few people, ever diminishing returns. And, you know, unless you've got skin in it, I feel disingenuous. I did. This probably sounds pious, but I, I just do. Um, just photographing, posting it, and people say, oh, this is a wonderful photo. They say, no, it's nothing like enough. Uh, it wasn't enough in Kenya. Mm. It wasn't enough with projects we've done in Kenya for FGM, for, 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 for um, water uh, projects, all sorts of stuff like that. And it certainly wasn't enough with tigers, um, anything like. And that's why I, I think, and, and I might add, um, when I first had this idea, uh, well, I went into this school, and, and I said, how many school children are here expecting 60 or 70? And they told me 500. I said, wow, that, this is ridiculous. Uh, and that's where it started. And I thought, look, and I walked around the, ground, uh, the grounds, and I thought, this is about big enough for a cricket game. Uh, and so eight months later, Simon, uh, my esteemed uh, friend there, came, came out with us. Uh, and a magnificent inning, Simon, uh, uh, not out uh, at, at, at the crease. We won the first one. I think the only time we won. Uh, and... Um, and so we had a cricket game, and I added some money on to everybody who came, and so that started the whole foundation thing. And then, 
and then it really took off from there. And then I think the main reason... So the real foundation started, became, came before the suit? Oh, well before the suit, 2006, right. Simon. I remember it, uh, I think it doubled your circulation that day, though. Well into triple figures uh, uh, that day. Uh, and um, no, what then happened uh, is I ran the marathon in, I can't remember, 2000 and something. Uh, and I, was pretty, I trained hard and I was pretty pleased with myself. And I remember coming in and knowing that they're photographing, they send you the photo, and giving it the big, as I came in, really, the, you know, Look at uh, me. all of that. Yeah. And then the photo came in. And about this far behind me was someone dressed as Big Ben uh, with this. <laughs> uh, and, and obviously, I didn't buy the photograph. And I remember thinking, no, I, I, I felt utterly disenfranchised <laughs> by this. Uh, and, um, and so that, I think, planted the seed. Right. And then I just thought, well, I'm never going to win the marathon. Uh, this is silly now. And if I want to raise a significant amount of money, I've got to do it. And so the first time I ran the marathon, yeah, it was, it was, very, it was very different. Uh, it, it really wasn't. I thought uh, it might just be the only time I did it. But and hang on, you didn't just wear it. a basic... You didn't just... Um, can we have a round of applause for a man wearing that? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> talk, us through, talk us through the suit, because it's not like a onesie that you've put on, is it? <laughs> this is a, a yeah. bit of a weight and heft Well, firstly, uh, and Liz absolutely got this, uh, it, the suit, it's all about the head. Uh, it really is not, the, as I said earlier, the miserable person inside it. Uh, I'm hurting there, uh, but that's in Docklands in 2010 on the, on the first marathon I did. I've got to be honest, the night before, uh, I, I said to, 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 to my wife, I said, I don't know if I'm going to finish this. I haven't done a marathon for a few years. And, you know, she's, I imagine Donna said, I don't yeah, know yeah, if you're going to finish from, this. From, from Manchester, she said, talk, stop talking so soft uh, and, and get on with it. Uh, but the main thing is, is at the end of it, I realised that I hadn't really left that much out on the course. Uh, I was like, no, well, we, we can't stop but here. I, I still don't understand why not just wear a tiger outfit. How much does no. this weigh? No, well, it weighs. It's not. It doesn't weigh so much. It's about 14 kilos. But that's uh, a lot. No, it's not. It is uh, definitely a lot. I've seen you walking on TV with your big boots, rucksack, running and everything. I'm not running a bloody uh, but, marathon. Um, the, 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 the other thing about it is, is it's not good in the wind. Uh, it really isn't. <laughs> It, it really is. It's like a sail about your uh, face in the wind. Uh, uh, <laughs> it, it really isn't. So, yeah, that was hard. What, you sound uh, like you've gone backwards rather than forwards? Yes, uh, I, I really have. Fortunately, none of them are too bad. Brighton as well. So the next year, we thought, that's not enough. Um, so that was the first time we did the... Uh, you see how the, the cricket game uh, had really turned into something? Uh, right. And it was well-sponsored, and we paid for it. Uh, and, but this, the school had been completely redone by then. Uh, and that, as you can see here, is a new patrol vehicle. Uh, for the park, we'd uh, got enough money for as well. All so, right, hold on, just so I understand it, even if everybody else does. So the, the patrol vehicle there, you've earned, you've yep. raised the money mm. to buy this patrol vehicle, Yeah, that's right. right. In yeah. a country with a space race. Yes, you've, that's right. You've had to provide that. No, it's a, And it's you've a, done that through the Save the Tiger Tiger Trophy, etc. Yeah, yeah. And, yep. events and, and, and running, through donations and all sorts. Right. Uh, and running guests. marathons at that point? Huh? Not at that the, point, 2010. I've done one. You've done the I've one. I've done one. And you've since done how many? Wearing the well, suit. Well, 19. Um, 19 marathons yeah, wearing, wearing the suit. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah I'm it's happy to pause for that. Come um, on. It's a hell of a thing. Yeah. So, um, why marathons? Uh, because uh, if you're going to do this, there's so many people who, who do incredible things and they don't raise very much because they don't get enough publicity. Uh, right. And it is, you've got to be a slave to publicity for that with, with a simple um, goal that you're going to you're going to um, raise money. So it's really by money. a public display of self-torture, really, that yeah, you can raise yeah, money. Yeah, absolutely. People recognise, they see the je jeopardy aspect what of it. What a lunatic. Let's yeah, yeah, that's some right. Money. Uh, they do. And believe me, you're astonished on the course what people call you. I've had them all. Go on, Lion Man. Let's just, sorry, <laughs> let's just have a look at it. Lion Man. I've had Jaguar, Cheetah. It's Britain. Uh, leopard, uh, Panther. Uh, oh, it's, it's astonishing. Uh, it is. Uh, so... Yeah, a bit of training. So 2011, we thought, let's do four marathons in a week. So I was in Antarctica. So you established the Worth More Alive campaign. Yes. Just give us a little bit quickly as we are... I don't know where the hell yeah, the yeah, tiger's yeah. gone. OK, uh, the, the, the key thing... Give us the facts behind that, right? How much the tiger is worth in... Yeah, and very simply, if you poach a Bengal tiger on the slab, all of the body parts are used, um, you know, parceled off piecemeal to Vietnam, China, last... Uh, or... Cambodia, it could be worth thirty, thirty-five thousand um, dollars. I've driven through a national park that had lost all its tigers. It was a ghost town. Every single person was destitute. Um, a, a live 
tigress could be worth as much as probably 70, 80 million dollars. It's so simple. And uh, just explain, unpick that, that If you imagine a price. tigress that lives 12, 13 years, has four litters, mm. think of every single ancillary benefit uh, from the guides to the rangers to the park wardens to the hotels, the lodges, the... So the tens and hair, tens of thousands of people yeah, employed in tourism. associated with mm. it, yeah. It's so simple. It really is so that the, the catchphrase worked and it stuck and each year I did it. Always very important, I beat the rhino. Uh, uh, I was at, um, <laughs> uh, it, was a, it, it was a big thing, uh, it really was. Uh, Terry can't be here tonight, he did, uh, he did three uh, marathons with me. Absolutely superb he was. With a very we did, heavy tiger We did four, uh, yeah, we, we did four. He looks happy, doesn't he? Uh, um, <laughs> Happier we, than you, mate. Yeah, uh, yes, I was hurting a bit there. And then exactly 10 years ago, I was here, you reckon that hallowed hall uh, of this, uh, with Chris Haslam, a very big supporter from the Sunday Times, uh, with the suit uh, and uh, we're talking through it. That was Brighton. We thought the following year, you can't keep asking people for money if you're doing the same thing. So we thought we'll do Brighton Marathon because it's a week apart and then we'll fly to Kenya and then drive to Tanzania and we'll climb Kilimanjaro and then the fly back. Way? Huh? Is this the royal we? This is you Yeah, well, no, doing people this. came with me. Right. Oh, well, yeah, they didn't all do the same thing. And, um, and, not wearing uh, and then that's you see on Kenya Airways, who are absolutely delightful, just getting a hand towel. Uh, they, at first, uh, only time I've ever been upgraded. We were both upgraded, uh, which is nice, face, uh, face marks. So that was great. And then, yeah, there we are. So we drove down, Tanzania was clear, and it looked all fine and dandy. Unfortunately, at that time of year is wet season, except it's not wet season on the top of the mountain. Uh, so there's the tiger on the, on the, um, uh, on the climb. Uh, and there we go. Yeah, it was, um, it was tough. The weather got worse and worse. Jules, are you here, Jules, tonight? Where are you? Uh, somewhere uh, in here. I know she is. Uh, where, where are you, Jules? Yeah, that, that is you, I think. You're not smiling, uh, nor was I, uh, as, as that's pretty close uh, to the top. And there, yeah, well, wonderful. We made it to, to there. And then we moved on and had to, uh, oh, dear. So from there, we got down the bottom of the mountain. We had to ch charter a plane with that group because we were so far behind the eight ball. It all went horribly wrong. We had an amazing guide, e Emmanuel, Ema, who the previous year had guided, I don't even remember, all of those celebrities who'd done Kilimanjaro. Uh, so, you know, he's an amazing line of pedigree. So nice when he came over to the UK that all of them returned his phone calls. I thought that was lovely. <laughs> what a disgrace. Uh, not one of them would have made it to the top. Absolute divas, a lot of them. Uh, and um, so we got back, and then, unfortunately, we were very late. This guy here had pretty much lost control of all of his faculties by the time we got to the bottom, uh, and it was pretty hard. And the worst thing about it was flying back, I realized I had a sunburn to hell. I had to um, do a marathon the next day. And I remember getting up in the morning, I was an absolute zombie, and uh, turned on the radio and said, anyway, the weather forecast for marathon runners. Very good particularly for the quicker runners. That's not what you want to hear. Uh, so by the time I came home here, the rain had been coming like this along the embankment, uh, and um, there was about 28 people there. And so I'd, I was told that was it. I was told, I'm not going to do anymore. And then I was shamed the next year by everybody saying, hang on, Tigers are still on the endangered list, so you've got to do it again. And so I did Brighton with Simon, my dear friend Simon, uh, who, who was just amazing. And the previous, he's a lay preacher, and the previous year, when we were at 4,000 meters, my little Nokia phone, he still uses one, uh, and my little Nokia phone rang, and it was him. And he said, hey, Paul, how are you doing? He, he couldn't come with us. Uh, and it, this was such a wonderful moment of the whole campaign. And he said, just listen in. And there was just silence for about 30 seconds. And he said, just to let you know, that's my uh, congregation, just all praying for you on the mountain. Oh. Uh, I don't know whether <laughs> Simon and Jane are here uh, tonight, but it, it was a magnificent moment. Uh, it really was. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have a backup runner the following weekend. So on the Friday, before the London Marathon, I rang my old mate, Ryan. He's a Kiwi, uh, big sports fan. Sorry about, you guys got hosed, didn't you, this morning, uh, in the, in, in, by, by the Pakistanis. God, you really did. Anyway, you will beat our Come on. Despe desperately dull rugby side you in a few weeks. You rang Ryan. Uh, anyway, so I rang him and said, um, <laughs> Ryan, what are you doing Sunday? So I oh, know, watching a bit of sport, and I went, hmm. <clears throat> How do I put this? Uh, um, <laughs> how do you fancy uh, running the London Marathon? He's not a runner, he's a cyclist. And typical Ryan, you know. Yeah, mate, I'll be there. Uh, so thank God, That's Ryan, respect, wherever you are. Before. Where are you, mate? I know you're in here somewhere. Uh, but massive, at the back there, massive respect. I, I couldn't have done that Can we give a round of applause yeah, to Ryan, well done, mate. please? <laughs> and then... then right, of course, me, hang on, let me cut in for a second. Do you get any brand sponsorship? 
brand sponsorship yes. world. We've talked a little partner. bit about this. This was your chance to talk yeah. to rant about them. Well, think of people who use Tiger as a brand. Breakfast cereals, golfers, rugby clubs. There's many. How many of them do you think put their hands in their pockets, got some skin in this? Have a wild guess. Have you tried contacting them? I did contact them. I contacted all of them. I wrote to them all. I endlessly. Them. Endlessly. Uh, and okay. not one of them no. has come forward no. with offers You would of think, support. especially the rugby club or something like that. Very easy to do a lap round Welford Road in Leicester. Um, yeah, it would have been, nah. Uh, and anyway, breakfast cereal, that would have been a good one. Um, but um, yeah, it just didn't happen. Uh, it really didn't. Why? So. Why? Uh, don't ask me, Simon. You know, I, it always astonishes me. You know, what a sympathetic thing that would be. Mm. Why do, I mean, Kenya always jumped at it. And they said, we don't have tigers in Kenya, but I know this is going to be a good story. <laughs> it was a good story. Uh, it was well, you know, it got in a lot of papers, so, so, so that was great. Uh, it was. So, um, yeah, and then the next year we had to get the suit to India. It's a natural place. And Barry, who is oh, This is uh, my favourite photo. Front, Huh? This is my favourite. Yeah, I mean, Barry is sat there in front it's of me. It's a Barry who, pick. Who took this. Yeah, he took that. It just absolutely everything. Mm. Uh, and we had Chris from the Sunday Times was with us. When we arrived, we went the other side. We drove uh, from uh, Delhi. We got to Agra. We got the other side of the Taj. And suddenly, you know, there's one or two tourists around there. Uh, and you get out of the bus with this dirty great tiger. And the Indian police are like, it's Christmas. <laughs> uh, you know, hello, we're transgressing any number of uh, little codicils and laws. Uh, and, uh, and Chris said to me, oh, God, we're in trouble here. He said, what I need is my fixer from five years ago. And, oh, there he is. <laughs> the guy just turned up. And so he just put it on Murdoch uh, and a threw a load of money at it so we could get photos like that. And it was so important of all of the photos, that one. Yeah, it is. It is. There's comedy there. Um, but also, I remember having to dodge where I was putting my feet because all the cattle had walked along there as well. But um, do you ever, yeah, do you, there's a, comedy. Do you ever get a negative reaction to the suit? No, very. In India, do very, people okay with, with yeah, the suit? They absolutely. don't feel that you're drawing attention absolutely. to something they'd rather avoid. No, no, none of that. I, a lot of people said, "Well, if you really want to finish it, why don't you take it to China and do the Great Wall?" I would be arrested probably on setting foot. The things I've said mm. about China, but uh, not in over India. the years, and we'll continue to say um, uh, about it as well. So mm, I, I don't think so. You did four marathons in one week. Yeah, I know that was a lot. Um, you did yeah. The, uh, you did the Brighton Marathon. I did Brighton, and then we then did you one. Walked, hang on, then you walked to London, and yeah, then did that the was London a Marathon, and you yeah. ripped your body up doing that. Yeah, I did, I really hurt myself. Um, crippled by it almost. Yes, my Achilles was in absolute tatters. I couldn't do anything for a year after that. And frankly, if it is Tuzi here, is my uh, long suffering physio, was, uh, she put me back to. They're all in, in the house yeah. tonight. Right. Yeah, she, 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 um, she put me back together again uh, because I wouldn't have been able to do it. it. It was incredibly tough. And I thought that was it. Uh, that was the, one of the best photos also taken of it. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's a guy in his early 50s thinking, why am I doing this? Uh, and, um, <laughs> Are you thinking yeah. that? Because then you continue doing wow, it, Oh, yeah, I know. I know the feeling afterwards. There, right. is, there is some satisfaction. There, there, there really is. How much uh, have you raised now, Paul? Um, it's uh, well over 300,000, uh, yeah. And that goes to... I mean, I, I just very kindly... the. Um, from the Exodus Foundation. Uh, they just gave me what the latest trench from this one is. And, you know, pragmatism saves animals. It just does. Uh, it, not D-listers crying crocodile tears about them. It's pragmatism. And, and, and people, all sorts of animals, that they feel, you know, if you have good solutions, solid solutions, that even small amounts of money can make a difference, um, it's everything. Uh, you can't just give money to tigers. You can't fall in love with tigers. It's not going to help. But the biggest problem, of course, with tigers, with almost all animals, it's encroachment and animal-human conflict. Mm. And so the latest project is about cattle sheds. It's about gas ovens to stop deforestation, to keep the cattle out of those areas. Because, uh, you know, to give you an idea, one year I wanted a compensation claim, and we went all the way down. Currently, people, uh, farmers are waiting almost a year to get money back if they lose cattle. We had it down to about that far. Arvind, your father, helped enormously on this, that people would get it inside 10 days if we had proof. Just a photograph. Which damaged. makes it much less likely that they'll then start poisoning the tigers exactly. because they're taking their cattle. Exactly. Right, and yeah. this is what I got in such deep water in Kenya about. And, you know, I mean, lost my trading licenses and, and had various threats. But um, Why? Well, because I told the truth about lions being poisoned. There was some program on well, about it. Well, in talking it a few about it. Yeah, was... absolutely, and writing about it. Right. Just telling the truth, that's all. But, you know, unless you're like you do when you pre present, you use the truth. I've seen it written, you use the truth like a rapier, and you have to. Uh, if we want our children still to see these animals, you have to be prepared to put your, your head well above the parapet. But get this particular program just works. Um, it just does to 
keep people out of the national parks, keep their cattle out of it, keep the trees still there, mm. keep the cattle enclosed. That's what you raise money for, and it doesn't take much. Uh, All right, a gas oven's thirty-five dollars. Let's yeah. see some of the pictures from Simon's the picture. campaign. Simon's picture. Okay, this was uh, this was the first year. Uh, Simon's picture. Um, uh, yeah, from and that was their school. That's Papu. I know the shorts. Well, hang on, hang on. Let's let's headline it. So what we're going to see now is some photos of some of the achievements over the years. Yeah. Over the years of the Worth More Alive campaign. That's right. This school, as you can see, takes 500 people. What? It had nothing. Had no running water, no board. Where is it? In Bandavgar, in Tala, in the town. So it's right on the edge. Right of on the edge. The park. They're not really feeling much benefit from tigers, are they? That is Papu. He is my um, uh, 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 my Indian brother. He, he looks the happy most on the back. Extraordinary. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I was I was uh, on the on the front. That's why. With, uh, with very bad shorts, uh, uh, by the looks of things. But um, yeah, it's um, it was. So I just remember thinking, well, hang on, we can make this work. You know, if we can't get school children engaged, and if this this is where we have to start at that nascent mm. level. Uh, and so we did, and that was the first Tiger Trophy. Now, this gentleman here, Ravi, was the school captain. He caught me out, I remember, fielding at mid-wicket. Uh, and um, most importantly, he now, I have looked after him over the years um, and really encouraged him. He's one of the best guides in the park now. Uh, and he wouldn't be if he hadn't ever had a proper education, which we managed to do. That looks a little better there, doesn't it? Uh, it's simple. This is, this is what you do. It has a borehole. It has electricity. Uh, it has a water tower. It, you know, stuff that you need when you're trying to look after and nurture 500 schools. But this orders. isn't just giving them a check, is it? This is having no, to be involved no, no, and make no, sure the money's spent. Oh, God, the work. The work that is done. Because if you just give a check, you get the feet up and wait till the next yeah. handout. It, it has to be policing. It's something we're trying to do with the current school that, so stuff doesn't get stolen or vandalized. I mean, yeah, that's at the end of the cricket. A lot. Of, this is the best event they have each year, this cricket game, massively. Whether they win or lose, in that case, that was the other time we, we won, actually, <laughs> uh, that day. There's another one, gas ovens. It's an absolute future. Those ladies, not only do they have, and we're still doing this now, not only do they have a gas oven to cook, you know, they don't have smoke in their little houses, mm. which, you know, giving them all sorts of problems all day long. And gas oven, that's uh, another program. I'm not happy there, as you can that's see. That's a very sexy uh, shot, Paul. I feel a bit traumatising. Really angry, badly angry. Why do pupils have to have a school like that? So that was the next project. This is the more recent one. That's, you're trying to, 280 pupils, you're trying to cook Can we go them. back to the pool on the perching? Mm. So explain the anger here. Well, I mean, it just has nothing. It doesn't have any proper toilets. Uh, God knows how they eat. There's no perimeter fence, so any grass they might have been is just done by, by cattle. Uh, and it's all done through the Indian government, and really, do they care? Well, they should care, because unless you, unless you make the tiger viable, it's just going to be like another village school in Madhya Pradesh. Uh, and it's not. And if you look at it, yeah, that's not a good sight. You want to send your pupils to use that urinal? I don't. So you were trying to make the school more welcoming, totally an and place utterly. for education. And so, and so they realise, you know, that, that they would have none of this money, none of this development uh, without Bengal Tigers. Look at it now. They're a bit happier, aren't they? They've got solar panels. Hmm. They've got water. They've got grass. And they've got a perimeter fence, critically. And they look a bit happier inside, don't they? And they've got teachers. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so it's very simple. They'd have none of that without Tigers. They just wouldn't. That's the dream. So you make the direct connection for the pupils totally. there, the families living around. Yeah, yeah, totally. Always have. Whether it's been leopards in Sri Lanka, whether it's been... Yeah, absolutely. I do. Um, and, and it's the only way they will survive. Any animal, any one of these species gets enough money. Signature species. Mm. I don't know how many rhino charities there are. It's got to be audited properly. And it's got to avoid the, the sort of ghastly, um, unholy trinity of sort of endless meetings, four-wheel drives and HR or whatever. You know, it, that's not what makes things work. Uh, it isn't. Uh, it Can we, just isn't. I mean, I, I know you, your answer, but just to play with the thought, I mean, what you're talking about is a justification for travel, really, isn't it? Well, that as well. Uh, so when people start getting pious about Ooh, carbon balance, this, that, and the other, look, I'll tell you right away, without tourism, we can kiss goodbye to all of these major species. Mm. Straight away. No question. And then it just becomes a question of appropriation uh, of funds. No, it is. It's, it's not just, a, I mean, it, the, it's, it's not just the species, but it's the entire ecosystem. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, and it's important. It really is. Uh, and, um, yeah, when you see something like that in the <laughs> wild, and 
you know, I just look at the audience here, and there's a lot of you here who have been incredibly generous uh, over the years. I may have put myself through it a bit. You know, the success story is people putting their hands deep in their pockets, and they have. Uh, they really have. So, yeah, are they? You think so? I do. And I'll continue to think so. Uh, I really will. Um, yeah, and so you get heroes. You just do. That's, all mid-morning snack, chai and noodles. Yeah, that's good. There are heroes. Without Jim, the Kilimanjaro thing would not have happened. If you want someone, he's done 40 treks up Kilimanjaro. Absolute stalwart, absolute hero and a dear friend. Wouldn't have happened without him. There he is. That is Papu and Manjit. None of this would have happened without them. They are sorcerers. They're magicians. You think I have them in Kenya? This is their equivalent. Um, in, that was last May. Um, yeah, there's Simon uh, and aforementioned Nokia uh, and Alan as well. Uh, that was in Cardiff when we did four in a week. Also heroes. There's so many. Do you know what? I've got, I've got to do it and it'll take me... I've got to thank you. I've got to say names. You're probably here. You might not be. Uh, Terry can't be here. Uh, Simon and Jane. Elise, I know you're here. 2014, you were here. Andrew, you got me through in 2011 with Alan. Ed, you've been more generous than anybody. Um, Arvin and Mohan. And... Of course, Dean and Chris and Ben and most of all, my family, um, they have been unbelievably supportive. Uh, they really have. I think my eldest, I remember the first time I brought the suit into his school and he, everyone laughing, hey, and I remember him looking around and said, I don't know whether this is a good thing or not, Dad. Uh, you, know, <laughs> well, you know, can't you just work in insurance or something? Uh, I mean, you know, sorry, other jobs are available. Uh, but, um, Did you wear yeah. the leggings? Uh, no, did I did not. The leggings right. were a later thing. Uh, that, was a, Thank God. that was a proper midlife Josh uh, crisis. Josh was saved. Uh, they were. Also, Chris, he, see, we did get him to put on the suit uh, once on Tower Bridge. He has been a huge help and sent me some really, really very supportive messages, particularly uh, during uh, the trek. And Mr. Haslam himself from the Sunday Times, um, yeah, and a lot of, the, lot of the publicity wouldn't have been without him. Uh, or Dean, so, so many, but I really mean it, uh, those sort of people, and, and, you know, it's my family that have to pick up the pieces when I come back, and also, you know, they know when that approaching time, when I am irascible and impetuous and impatient and, um, you know, rage-filled, well, more than normal, uh, and um, it, it is a tough time for them, I, I do realise, but they do get uh, the end of it. And also, Jack, you're the one who coined that extraordinary image. That is completely made up. I wondered, because I had to train for this for three years. Of course, it was meant to happen in 2020. I had the idea. Somebody said, why don't you do the Everest Marathon? I said, don't be so stupid. Don't be so ridiculous. All right. Is this the final one before you're going to talk about this? Yeah. All right. So let's have a massive round of applause. Paul is now going to talk about his Everest Marathon. And as he gets up, we all should say, so he's going to talk about his Everest marathon, and then he's, we're going to have a, an auction. We're going to go straight into the auction, OK? okay? So I, I, I'm joking apart. You, you, are gonna, you are going to get out before midnight. Can we dim the lights a little bit? Yeah, let, let, the pictures are more important than, um, uh, than me. If we can take the lights off the screen a bit. Is that all right? Can you hear me at the... Just take they a... Can can we, you. Yeah, great. We can take <laughs> them down a bit. OK, so most important thing. Uh, when I took this on, as I said, it was meant to happen in, in uh, 2020, it didn't. Uh, and then we thought it might happen in 2021, and it didn't. Uh, and um, then, uh, yeah, I thought, let's do it, let's make this happen. And when I jumped on the plane, um, I remember thinking, I've got to be angry uh, for this, because otherwise I'm going to be defeated. And I nearly was anyway. So the first thing I did was book that, buy that, uh, that made me suitably angry uh, for the whole thing. Uh, and, um, and then I flew to... Uh, my God, it did. Uh, uh, anyway, I flew to, um, to Kathmandu and, and went to a hotel, the Royal Singhi uh, Hotel. Hello. Uh, Royal Singhi, I, I haven't used for... I hadn't been there for years, but it's always one uh, used with trekking groups and all sorts. Uh, and it was wonderful, and I had a cup of tea. I thought, this is going awfully well. Uh, and then we drove for about five hours and stayed in this little guest house. So all good so far. Uh, there's the guest house there. And then I thought, I'm going to go all Shoreditch with my food whilst I'm out here. So I thought, I'm just going to have some noodles. I'm not going to go meat. Uh, that's fine. Now, this is... Uh, here we are. This is... Yeah, that's it. Being cooked there. Uh, error. Big error. OK, at five o'clock, 
I remember waking up, and you know the feeling well. I'm not going to go in great detail, but uh, mm, and like that. I remember seeing Arsenal had lost, so that made me happy. Uh, uh, and, um, and then thinking, oh, not so good. Uh, and essentially, we've been there. Uh, there it is again. That was my Shoreditch uh, meal. Uh, I just went with noodles. And then there's the suit. I had 13 hours in this four-wheel drive over bumpy roads. After six hours, I wasn't even telling them to slow down. I was just opening the door <laughs> and getting up. I have never felt so. I mean, this is the first day. This is not a good start at all. I mean, I was so weak. Uh, and I thought, I've got to start trekking tomorrow. Uh, and we stopped, we got our first view of Everest. And it was just, it was hideous. It really was. And what a wonderful tractor. Imagine that West Country Tory MP. He would have loved that, wouldn't he? Uh, <laughs> he, 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 uh, he, he really would. Uh, and then we, um, uh, and then we, so there it is, the suit, and we had to take it up. And you know what? You, you saw how wonderful Kenya Airways were about the suit. Absolutely wonderful. Uh, and then no one wanted to have any of it. And, and Sam, you were, and, 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 and Richard, you were supportive on this. I, I really mean it. But you would have thought, yeah, oh, yeah, we'll look after you. Yeah, we, we won't charge you. My God. You know, imagine the publicity they, they, they just ignored. It was hopeless. So we got it there, and they damaged it. So the poor girl went into traction, as you can see. We've got to <laughs> shove it up there. And I'm weak as that. The suit's damaged. This is not a good start at all. So this, this was the first photograph um, my, my wife um, published. She said, you look all right. And I didn't tell her. I thought, well, this is not going to help, is it? By saying, you know, actually, I've already lost a stone. <laughs> uh, I, I was so weak. Uh, and so that, that'll teach me. So, yeah, then it started. And that, that was the first sign. It's easy. Stand by the sign. Base camp. I'm on my way. So this is going to be real, mainly... Uh, we left Bupsa, and mainly this is about the trek, because it didn't take thousands of photos while you're actually running or crawling the marathon. Uh, and, of course, yeah, the suit attracts all sorts of attention, uh, often from dogs, but they're not hostile to it. That's important uh, to the story. And so it was raining, uh, and then we got here. There is Raj. It was just me and Raj for the first few days, because we couldn't fly into Lukla, because they couldn't get the suit in a small plane. Uh, and so, and it rained. Now, that suit is designed for a flat marathon. Okay, it's not designed for walking down and up like this, because the tail catches. And I'm, at any stage during that, one fall away from the whole thing being off. Uh, that's why I remember the previous year, I, I, I think, uh, I was trying to keep up running with one of my sons, which was it's just foolish, uh, and uh, doing my hamstring. And I, I just the whole time, I was like, Dad, come and play football. Oh, I don't know. But... Just so close to falling. I took three falls during the time there. They're just bruises and cuts. But yeah, that's Raj, who was amazing. And that was, it. that was the first night. And I think I ate a boiled egg. That was it. And it was, yeah, that didn't work either. Uh, uh, and it was just a disaster. Uh, but it's rather lovely. You, you started realizing the attention you get. Uh, and it's always positive. And I love it. And Nepal is, they are just, uh, how many have you been to Nepal? Here. You would agree, some of the gentlest, loveliest, most hospitable people. And always Nepal is, oh, have a photograph. You know, if you're schlepping with this thing like this, and they were, oh, please, could I have a photograph? Uh, would you mind? Uh, any and of course you can. And, and then some, uh, so Indians sometimes a little bit different. Let me take a click. Don't call it a click, uh, all right? Uh, can you, and I love it when they say, can you hang on a sec? Uh, no, uh, all right? I, I'm, I'm trying to get somewhere here. I'm, go I'm going to walk. Uh, you can keep up, all right? You're not carrying this. Uh, but it does get a lot of attention. Uh, only Italians would uh, bare chest it. This is a tough group. They loved it. I love that. Uh, I really did. So it's, it, it does. And does this help? Yes, it does. Of course it does. Uh, of course it does. You see, um, you, you see uh, this. And the first rope bridge you go across in a suit, it's a, yeah, it is poor footage. Sorry, it's taken on a phone, but it's a little bit alarming. Uh, but then when you see a whole trail of, um, of yaks going across, you see, Simon, you wait till the end of the video, and then you advance it. Uh, you see, it's uh, a simple. So, yeah, and then, of course, you're like, yeah, I'll pose for the shot there. Now, by this time, of course, um, I'd met up with the other runner, Jennifer and, and Bronwyn, and of course, Valerie Parkinson, uh, who none of this uh, would ever have happened. Uh, she took that photo. So then we're kind of on the way. And this was the first place I ate something. I had some cereal and a bit of rice. Uh, and so gradually began to get my strength back. And then I thought, you know, this is beginning to happen now. And I really felt stronger. And so I got going a bit. And then we got to the gate of the National Park, Everest National Park which is a problem. Do you see anywhere on the rules there anything about wearing a tiger? Uh, <laughs> forbidding you entrance into the park. Do you? Anywhere? No, nor do I. 
Okay, but they weren't letting me in. Okay, they were quite happy to take photos of themselves uh, in the suit, <laughs> but they were letting neither me nor the suit in. Now you can imagine how calm uh, and, <laughs> and, and, and patient I was about that. Not very much, actually. And Valerie went many phone calls to the uh, boss of the Everest Marathon, uh, Bikram Pandey, who then, you know, exercised. You must have done this so many times, Simon, when you can't get filming rights, but you say we got the paperwork. And either it involves throwing a bit of money at it or, um, you know, not going to the monkey, but the organ grinder, probably not allowed to say that either. Um, and it did make a difference. Uh, it really did. And so much for Bikram is in the country at the moment, actually. And he, more importantly, he has he told me today, he sent me a message, he has made both me, but more importantly, the Tiger, the honorary Goodwill, Goodwill Ambassador for the Everest Marathon. So, yeah, that's a, that's a nice... No, 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 I'm not doing it again. I'm not doing it again. And then, of course, he says, and if you get some more people to run, I'll give you a little... Yeah, no, it doesn't matter where you are. It's like, enough of that. Uh, but they did eventually let us in, so we got into... Um, uh, got into to, to Namchi, uh, and um, I feel there's a disorder gag here, but I can't quite get it going. Uh, but um, yeah, that was great. And then by that time, I was feeling all right. I was uh, eating well and got up early uh, to get my first view. Uh, Raj and I got up very early to get my first view of the, of the mountains above Namchi there, and, and, and uh, the, the, this guy just walked past perfectly for the photograph. And then we left Namchi, and we met somebody who would have uh, an extraordinary effect on the whole climb, and frankly, everything, to this day, actually. Uh, I want you to look at this lady here, Natasha. Some of you may have met her. She has a tea house about an hour and a half outside Namchi Bazaar, so nobody should really stay there. You generally want to be trekking a bit further now. Everybody does, because of her, because she is, frankly, ridiculously charismatic, and she just grasped the whole thing here. And she was amazing. Um, she uh, and her husband and her family, they make jewelry. Uh, and it, they sell a bit there. But each year, they fly to the States to sell a load of this jewelry. And all the profits go into social care in and around Namchi Bazaar. She's a hero. She is my hero. I've talked about heroes this evening. You only need a few. She's one of them. And she's a new one. She's got an important part to play, and she has energy. You think I have energy? Oh, my God. But very much like me sometimes, uh, and also Mr. Calder there, who has ridiculous levels of it. But I've seen you walk into the wall when it's like, oh, I can go on no more. That is Namchi hitting the wall. Uh, that is uh, Natasha hitting the wall there. And also, if we're, 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 we're sticking with um, heroes, uh, this is another one. Valerie Parkinson is the most... And there may be some of you here who haven't. Um, done a trek in the Himalayas with Valerie. I find it very hard to believe that anyone would use anybody else because she's just... We would go into tea houses and there would be grizzled, experienced Nepalis and you'd hear this whisper, Valerie, it's Valerie, like this. Uh, and she is, 34, 35 years. Valerie Parkinson would have succeeded on the top of Everest. Okay, unfortunately, her guide let her down. She's on the Hillary step. She could see the top. She couldn't feel her left foot. So she did the right thing. And she turned around and came down and is still guiding minus five toes. Um, she's extraordinary, and none of this would have happened uh, without her. She's also very classy, always wears a skirt. Uh, you know, doesn't feel the cold, doesn't feel anything. I had some very dark times, which I'll tell you about in a second, but without her and without these guides, Anish here, it wouldn't have happened. It just would not have happened. By this time, we're gaining a bit in altitude, so it's beginning to hurt, particularly at um, Ding Boshe. Oh, God. I, I... It, it was a tough time there. You have two nights there, and you're over 4,000 meters. Uh, and uh, we did some acclimatization work, says so Valerie and, and, and Bromin. And, and I really started feeling it. I, I don't get altitude sickness badly. I, I've never had it. But I was so exhausted, I think not helped by the, uh, by the sort of Shoreditch squits I had. But um, it, it also, it, it just really... To give you the best idea to describe it is I was okay in the day. Problems were always better in the day. Um, and that smile is utterly false. Uh, I can show you. That helicopter, <laughs> bird strike coming up there, but uh, that helicopter there uh, is taking out uh, four people with extremely bad altitude sickness. Um, the second night there was where I hit rock bottom. I, I really did, because to keep warm, they, they have a yak dung oven. 
And at two in the morning, it's got a bit cold. <laughs> so I'm crouched around there. Every time I try to sleep, I drop off hideous, you know, nightmares induced by hypoxia or whatever it was. But Val took my blood, and it was very strong. It was A+. Plus. So I don't really know what it was. I then went to try and find an oxygen. I never told her this. Never told anyone this, actually. I went to find an oxygen tank. I thought, I'm going to try something just to distract me. And, and Raj said, you've got to have the whole thing. And I said, well, get me some pliers. Uh, and so I sort of opened it. <laughs> like, oh, well, maybe that's too much. And it was anything to just, just to distract me. And eventually, I think I, I got a bit of rest but as we got higher. But on, on times like this, you, you think about lots of things. But particularly, I, I have to keep my eyes on game number one, which is, of course, and I think of photos I've taken of, of, of Bengal tigers uh, and photographs I haven't got quite right. Uh, of slow shutter speeds I shouldn't have even tried. Uh, and particularly when you see young ones. And I, I kind of think of those, and that really more than anything else. I'd seen that three weeks before, and it gives me optimism. Uh, it just does, and you think things are right. Once we started going higher, strangely, uh, and a sort of half a Diamox pill, I started feeling a bit better. And as you can see, the condition's not always great. Uh, as you can see, that, that, that was pretty tough. Um, but um, with that, yeah, it is, it's May time. So you're going to get that sort of weather. And it, and it, was, it was cold, but it wasn't stupid. And, and then when you're feeling, oh, God, this is hurting, you meet a couple of guys like these. Now, these two came bouncing down past me. I said, oh, can we have a photo? I said, yeah, of, co uh, 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 of course you can. Uh, I'm happy to give them a photo. And um, I said, where have you been? Oh, yeah, we, we just got down. Uh, from, oh, I was from base camp. No, from the summit. <laughs> and what's more, they had done their training for three weeks. They'd, uh, they'd gone back down to, I think they'd uh, gone down pretty low to about three and a half thousand come up. They had done it from base camp up and down in 24 hours. Okay, so you think, <laughs> I'm carrying a tiger suit. I'm just going up to base camp. Uh, uh, these are superhuman. Uh, and uh, let's be clear, the, the first 35 people in on the marathon, where do you think they were from? That would be Nepal. Uh, who would have thought? Sometimes, though, when your hunger's back, you need to say, this is the best apple pie I've ever eaten. And I can assure you that wasn't the only piece I had. Uh, and once that sugar starts getting you, you get into, this was in Tangboshe, which was great. Happy to be there. I didn't use walking boots. I just used cushioned shoes. I've still got uh, problems with my, that Achilles with scar tissue. And as soon as we got there, they said, would you come and do a tree planting operation, which um, everyone's happy with. So it's not really what you want. You've been going eight hours. But uh, we went, uh, yeah, come and dig a hole and plant a tree, would you? But uh, yeah, it was nice. Uh, it was good, nice to be uh, recognized so that they, they were happy with that. You can see, look on my face. Yeah, I'm kind of done here. Uh, can I go now and have some chai, please? Uh, and... Um, so uh, that, that was good at Tangboshe. And um, the thing about Tangboshe is it has an important part in the marathon because the, it, it, it's the monastery there which is the cutoff. And when you start, when you come down, if you haven't reached Kang, Tangboshe Monastery by a certain time, there's no one there to tick you off. So you can finish the marathon, but it won't be till the next day. And you're kind of cut adrift. You have to find your own accommodation. So that was perpetually in my head during the race. By this time, of course, you're getting high up in the mountains and you've got this extraordinary mountain scenery and also a lot of attention. Uh, and this was wonderful. This guy was from, uh, this guy was from Nottingham. Uh, here, we're having a great discussion about Brian Clough uh, there, actually, for about half an hour. If who was better, Cloughy or, 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 or Pep? Obviously, Cloughy uh, uh, goes without saying. Uh, this is Lobache. You're high now, 4,000 plenty. Uh, this was early in the morning. We actually had some clear weather. It was, yeah, it's not that impressed, is it, uh, uh, with me. Uh, actually, animals generally pretty benign. Then you get to Gorup Shep, and yeah, this is tough. By this time, I, I felt a little better, but I suffer a bit from claustrophobia, and, and the thought of those small rooms and altitude and thin air and knowing we're going up to base camp is pretty hard, actually. Um, so, yeah... That was a sort of brave face on it, going higher up the mountain. And that's the top uh, at Kalapatar. That's above base camp. That's your big acclimatization walk. And it's not clear um, at all there, um, sadly. Um, not in the slightest. But you need to do that. But that was very, very hard uh, for me. I, I was suffering. I was a little bit dehydrated. Uh, and the problem with dehydration is that particular night, Valerie told me, come on, Paul, you, you must drink lots. Go and have one of those ginger and lemon things. 
So I bought a, you know, those old tartan um, thermoses, except this one's about that big. So I ordered, it was about 12 quid uh, for one of these things. And, and I saw all the ginger in there. I, you know, I thought, oh, they'll squeeze some lemons in. What I didn't realize, it was sort of lemon powder, which re really on the packet should have just said instant diuretic. Uh, and um, <laughs> I, I, about every 10 minutes, it was like gallons and gallons. Uh, it's just not what I needed. So I, I didn't sleep that well after there, but at least got that altitude. Um, in the tank, and it was cloudy, you know, in May time, uh, you often get that, but it also gives you some idea of just, can we just dim the lights a little bit more? Is it possible? Um, I, uh, just how beautiful um, in Nepal is, this, this extraordinary mountain kingdom. Uh, Valerie sent me that this morning. That's where she is. She, that was a bit of a Jim Bowen, really, wasn't it? Come on, look what you could have won, Paul. This is what it could have been like. Uh, uh, but... Um, yeah, there is Everest. That's what you should see from the top there. So the fact that I was exhausted and we didn't really get a view, that kind of made it quite hard as well. Uh, but anyway, uh, so that was... And then we are on the way up. As you see, and this was hard. It really was. I tell you what, you know, how many of you have been above 5,000 meters here? Just as, yeah, well, you'll know what I'm talking about. Everything has to slow down. Absolutely everything you do, you slow down. Because if you don't, you're going outside of that sort of vascular or, or, or indeed lung compass, and that's when you suffer. I mean, something like that. Even drinking, you need to take a few breaths first. Eating, even the simple act of, of, of mastication can, can make you gasp. Make you go blind as well, but uh, it, it's, uh, you know, it can be r real problems. Uh, I, I mean it. So if you're not disciplined, that's when you can fail. And yeah, it's like, please, can we have a photo? You can see how happy I am with that photo. Uh, I'm like, I want to get on with it now. So this is right up at base camp. And that is where we stay for two days at base camp. And it is hard. It really is. Because base camp is not where most people stay, only when you're doing the actual climb. So it's tough. That's very important. That's your toilet tent. That's the staff toilet tent. That's not one you want to go anywhere near. This is a moving ice field here. Let's be clear, a moving ice field. Uh, I was sat not this far from you, Simon, chatting to an Indian runner. He was sat on a pile of granite, and the whole thing just tumbled. And it's, what, you know, it's a moving ice field, and it doesn't help with a lot of people there. You know, you've got toilets, that's going to get into the ice. It is quite hazardous, but to have two nights there is tough. That's where you sleep. That's the view from my tent. It snowed a lot the first night. It really did, and you do little acclimatization walks, try and take some arty photos, but that ice is moving. It is very beautiful, I mean, let's be clear. And every time you feel exhausted, you're humbled by some of these porters coming past. One of them I met, 105 kilos on his back. Mm. And people say, oh, well, there should be protection and everything. Yeah, imagine two years of COVID, and none of them suffered in Nepal. <laughs> Living at altitude? Come on, but they were still butchered because tourists weren't allowed or couldn't go or whatever it was. And um, so if he doesn't take it, somebody else will. And it's very easy to sort of throw Western values on it, but it doesn't work. And you just stand around, you do a bit of acclimatization, enjoy the, you know, as much rest as you can. Uh, that is actually the route, though, and that's the bottom of the Kumbu Icefall. Um, there's a wonderful photo of it in the exhibition outside. Now, that's Ricky, and these three are all smiling because they're not doing the race. Uh, uh, and they're organizing uh, the, the whole thing. And I tell you, when we arrived, there was a helicopter there flying five people out, five runners who just weren't going to make it. Uh, their bloods had dropped, one of them very seriously ill indeed. Um, so yeah, it was sobering. Uh, it really was. That was the uh, winner outside of Nepalis, uh, just doing a training run. I didn't do a training run. Uh, no, I just ate. Uh, and that was the, the, the night before. And so I, I put her under the tarpaulin, and that's my tent there. You don't sleep very well. That's the night. Uh, let's see if this... Um... It's the night before the marathon. There's people clustered around in nervous groups, offering pretty disingenuous advice. I don't think anyone's feeling that confident. My preparation has been an absolutely magnificent hot chicken curry. Is that advisable? Around 13 miles tomorrow, I think we'll find out. Am I nervous? Of course I am. Is it the toughest thing I've ever done? 
What do you think? Yeah, I was. It was hard. I've got to tell you about that, that meal, because I had eaten vegetarian the whole way, and there was a group from the UK there, and there was a wonderful lad from Manchester, uh, and, and he sat opposite me. And, and anyway, Ricky, the guy came in and says, how many of you are vegetarians? And then this militancy I can't bear with food. Oh, we're all vegetarians. And I was like, whoa, no, we're not all vegetarians. Uh, and and um, he said, because we've done a... Uh, chicken curry, and I said, well, yeah, and I said, no, no, we're all vegetarians, this guy said, oh, I said, please relax, will you, and this lad from Manchester said, yeah, Paul, shut up, I think we could be in for a big feed here, uh, and um, <laughs> he was wonderful, and I thought, I realised, but no, what, I, I tell you, this really does bother, you all know the, the, the provenance of curry, it's cooked, it used to be bad meat, cooked for a long time, so this has been going for five hours, and this couple from the UK said, oh, no, 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 oh, no, oh, I don't know where they're from, well, probably made about that. I don't know, but, uh, uh, and, um, oh, no, 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 we're not going to eat meat now and risk getting food poisoning. I said, excuse me? Would you say that at home? Would you? Really? You know, that's gastronomic apartheid in my book. And, uh, but anyway, this lad Ian calmed me down. He says, right, so that night, they, it was the best curry. I had barely eaten, you know, I'd been sick. And I just thought, this is utter madness. The night before, you're going to eat three plates full of There was two French guys and myself, and they said, we're just piles of it. I thought, well, if I'm going out, I'm going down in flames. Uh, but uh, 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 quite literally, yeah. I mean, seriously, it was fiery hot. It was toilet roll in the fridge stuff. Uh, but it, it, was, um, it, 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 it was something. But so, yeah, it's just, this is the morning. The tiger's in bed, which is where just I'm going to be pretty soon. Uh, she's had an operation. Uh, on her feet, uh, the uh, frostbite uh, got too savage for her, and so we had to take him off. Uh, it was a sort of merciful, really, for her. Uh, I'm not sure she'll feel it tomorrow. I certainly will. And then, yeah, there's Valerie. A game, race face on, magnificent running gear, uh, and already for the race. That is the start. It's the bottom of the Kumbu Icefall. There we all are, ready to go. And, yeah, that's, that's the start. There's not a whole host of photographs now because I wasn't going to stop, you know? This is the slowest marathon I've done. I wasn't last. It took 12 hours. Uh, uh, it did, but um, that's the start. I mean, I think of London Marathon, Brighton, all the marathons I've run. That is the route. <laughs> I'd gone an hour. I hadn't gone two kilometers. <laughs> it's not a great start. And the organization, yeah, oh, there will be, what, what did we say? Well, there'll be noodles at three miles. There'll be Tibetan bread at five. There'll be, uh, what is a porridge. At, no, there wasn't any of it. Uh, there just wasn't. And, and it's important. Uh, it is. So that is it. You're still way above 5,000 meters there. I was managed to break into a bit of a trot uh, there. And, um, <laughs> yeah, there's Valerie. Look, she's still smiling. That's at about, I don't know, just before halfway. I'm really not smiling, and I have slowed down quite a lot. Uh, let's be clear. Uh, as you can see, oh, dear. Yeah, that's a really forced smile, isn't it? Uh, OK. And, and again, um, it, it did. It got harder and harder. And with five miles to go, we just done a, it's a 1,200-foot descent, steep then a 1,200-foot ascent. And I swear I fell asleep several times, actually, on my walking poles. I was just completely out of it. And then we get to Natasha's place. And I was done, completely done. Um, and she was ready. This is not much of a high five coming up. <laughs> Now, Namaste. <laughs> you can't really hear what I said. I said, what do you got here? Because I'd barely eaten. Piping hot cheese and tomato toasty, two of them, two piping hot chocolate brownies. I wouldn't have finished without them. I'd be absolutely clear. She was a hero, an absolute hero. Thank God for her. I mean it. Um, yeah, not just Valerie, Natasha, and... And also, you know, I had a signal from time to time, and all those people sending messages, fantastic, but you've still got to put yourself through it. 12 hours is a long time. Um, yeah, and that 10 minutes we spent there it just got us through to the end. Um, and, yeah, okay, I am happy there. Yes, I am. Uh, and Valerie looks as though she could do it, another marathon. 
uh, at the end of it. And then we checked into the hotel. I had to, of course, get photos to my esteemed friend Dean uh, out to make this story. And, you know, by the next morning there, it, it was great because you started seeing this one series of photographs. They kept cropping up. Uh, and yeah, and that's an important thing for the message. It's an important thing for the people staking money. It's all of those things uh, that are important. And then, of course, you know, we've got to get our way down to Lukla. But you've done it. And you enjoy it. And Nepal's a country to really enjoy. I love the country. I hadn't been there for, for too long. Uh, and it's very beautiful on the way down. And for those people at the gate, the, 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 the big thing when they didn't let me in, it was how would other animals would react to the suit, really? Um, and particularly the many dogs. Well, they're actually fairly benign. Uh, and uh, this one stayed with me for about four miles. It had a bit of an injury behind its ears, so I made sure when we got into Lukla that we got it looked after. Uh, as you can see, many dogs. I love dogs. I just do. Uh, and so that's it. We're into Lukla. And you think, yeah, this, we're done. Um, I'm going to have a lot to eat. I'm going to have a hot shower. There's a, oh, isn't that lovely? There's a sort of David Bowie um, uh, one there. And um, yeah, and then we had to leave. And yeah, and get back to Kathmandu. And it was, um, yeah, there'd been some issues about flights which was tough, and thank God, you know, I'm, you know this was all done under the auspices of a, of a decent tour operator who then said, no, we'll get you a helicopter. And I would tell you what, it was mayhem there. Hundreds of people, a couple of planes and a few helicopters, like the fall of Saigon. Um, it was, this is us leaving. And anyone who's landed there, that's the runway. You just fly into the side of the mountain. And this captain was incredibly cool. He just dipped the nose over the edge there. Stomach. He put me in the co-pilot seat. Now, he is pretty cool, isn't he? Uh, put me in the co-pilot seat, and he just chatted with me. He said, Paul, you are the most photographed person in Nepal in the last month. And I said, well, I think you'll find it's the suit uh, that is the most photographed. Uh, and it was. And just for a moment, uh, you know, leaving that, getting out of there, and that was the view down. And I just remember thinking, it, I didn't really feel massive satisfaction. I felt I got away with it because there was so much, so much nearly did go wrong, but any fall, anything, and, and so many people contributed to this. Uh, and yeah, it just, it, it meant a lot, uh, as did that. Now, I came back two days early from Kathmandu. I wanted to get home. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you, the airline again, who'd covered themselves in glory for charge. I got charged for that flight change. Yeah, a bit mean. Uh, but yeah, I thought so. I've paid it, but yeah, a bit mean. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, quite a lot of publicity, but never mind. I'm not bitter, though. Uh, anyway, um, we, we, as a team, we were very proud of that. Valerie picked that up uh, in, um, in Kathmandu. I had to get home for some wildlife of my own uh, there. That's Mabel. That was a big deal. And so you ask, how does the story end? Because um, I'm not sure there's a, a finite end to this. Uh, but it involves her, as of course it would. Because Liz, who designed the suit, I told her, I, you know, and understandably, I wasn't going to pay thousands more to get the whole thing back when I specifically said, this is the end. I've said it tonight. I'm not running any more marathons uh, in, the, in the tiger suit. Um, so she said to me, Paul, the whole suit, anything from here downwards, is just man hours. Right? It's just man hours, nothing more. Um, it's the head. So please, can you just bring the head back? So in Lukla, I rang, I spoke to my, my sons uh, and my family, uh, and they were adamant. They said, Paul, no, no, no. Because she just said very matter-of-factly, get a Stanley knife, take off the head, just bring that home. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. Um, I, I really couldn't, uh, for lots of reasons. And the thought of it actually uh, repelled me. I thought, this, this just isn't the way. And I, I thought, I've got to face my, my family with that. So... What did I do? I rang her. Valerie had a number. I said, Natasha, I'm leaving the suit. I'm not leaving it anywhere. I want to leave it with you. And the first thing she said, I will send a boy around. Um, I love that. She's so connected. And I only found out the whole time I was there, she needed root canal work. She never told us. <laughs> and also, she said, I'll send her around. She said, by the way, and in her lodge, which has a beautiful view, she said, I will put it in between the life-size print of the Dalai Lama and the life-size print of Prince, now King Charles. We'll rest it there. <laughs> and yesterday morning, 
Yesterday morning, you see the legs are, legs are gone. Um, <laughs> yesterday morning, Valerie sent me that photograph. She was in there, and she said there was hordes of people asking about it. So maybe, you know, people say, is it finished? Yeah, perhaps certainly marathons. Um, tigers are still endangered. We all know what we can do. Um, maybe one of my sons should put that on uh, in, uh, in some time. If somebody offered vast sums for me to do something silly in, about, silly in it, I don't know. Uh, but for now, she rests there. And thank you very much. Thank you, Sonny. Right. Right then. Right, please. We're going to do, and this is going to be fun. And if you've been to auctions before, I know people have to scuttle off and thank you and trains and all that, but this is going to be quick. We've only got a couple of lots. Very quickly. Let's stay with it. Okay, please. We've got a, a bit to, uh, we want to make some money. Please, 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 can we stay as long as we can for this auction? Um, we already have some bids that I have. Okay, so let's do this quickly. Uh, first one, we're going to have, I'm going to put two things together. Very kindly, Margot from Remembering uh, Many Different Animals has put a copy of Remembering Bears with, I think, 26 different photographers' signature. And there is only, this is the first photo we showed this evening. There's only one copy of this. Okay, only one copy of this. I'm not going to do another one. Uh, so that print, I would say with both this and the painting, we will take them with us. We will send them to you. You don't have it. Strangely, you probably don't want to go on the tube with that. Uh, all right. So, Simon, thank you. Uh, you, you we're going to put that here. I'll oh, put it up there. I'll hold uh, it. Okay. Simon's going to hold that. And those two things, uh, we've only got four lots, are going to go. So, um, can someone start the bidding for this? Please remember what this is for. Uh, is someone going to start me off with a bid for these two? Please, start it off. Just to show a hand. Just a hand is enough uh, for it. Yes. 200 pounds uh, is a decent start. Is somebody going to take that offer for a little bit more than that? The print and the bag. 300 at the back. Thank you. Yes, pointers. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Oren and, uh, and Jessica. Um, who else? 300 for the print. 400 here. Thank you very much, Alistair. 400. Is it going to go for that? I kind of feel it should go for the. Otherwise, Alistair's going to take it home with him. I'm quite, I'm quite happy for that. 400 to Alistair. 500 at the front here. Only four lots tonight. 500 pounds. Thank you very much, madam. Very kind. You know where the money's going. It will be, it, it will be audited properly. 500 pounds. Are you going to take it off, uh, Alistair? 550. I thought you might, uh, actually, yeah. You didn't look happy with her there. A little bit hurt, uh, yeah. 550 pounds. Oh, goodness me. Don't put your jumper on like that. That was nearly a bid, madam. Uh, <laughs> you can't do that. You can't possibly do that. You nearly had, I hope you've got a big white wall in your house, because uh, that was about to reside there. Uh, 550, I'm going to say, let's move on to the next lot. Going to Alistair, unless someone's going to take it off. Once, uh, 600? I hear 600 at the back. Thank you, 600 pounds, 600 pounds. No, Alistair's done. I think we have, I love it when they come in at the death there, just like that. So very somebody cool. is going to, I like, very cool. Someone's going to swarm all over you. Your credit card will be vaporized before you even know it. The lovely Jess is going to wander across there. So 600 pounds, I'm going to say sold. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> now, now then, now then, this, uh, ever since I posted that photograph of the two of us, I've had a lot of correspondence, people saying, how do we get one of these caps? Well, you can't, because there's only three of them. My son's wearing the khaki one. This is mine. That's Simon's. All right? So I'm not just, no, 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 no. Hold your money. Please, I know you're desperate for it. A one-off, as is also a one-off. OK, we know him for many reasons. But his particular sartorial is his headscarf. You are bidding for a piece of Simon Reeves' DNA, frankly. <laughs> this is unwashed, I can't uh, even all right? Now. Uh, the hat I did wash, because uh, he wore that in Kenya the whole time. OK, the, the, the Simon Reeves Shemag, never previously auctioned, and the Worth More Alive cap. Is someone going to start me off with this, please? 250. Right, OK. 250 will start the ball. This is Simon Shemag. 
Uh, come on, what a collector's item this is. 250, anyone gonna take that off them? The cap and the headscarf, you want this badly, don't you? It's, you can't afford it, but no, I know. Imagine you'll sleep with it like this. Um, uh, uh, 250? It's seriously nobody gonna take that one. I was hoping for so much more. I told you we should, I'm sorry? I'm happy, if it's 250, it's all money to the cause. Uh, we'll take it. Where are you, madam? 250 Australian, she wanted that badly. Yeah, it's, uh, oh, whoa, hang, on, hang on, what's that? 300, okay, let's just have a little bidding war here, shall we? Uh, by the way, join in from the cheap seats at the back uh, if you want to, uh, in the gallery. 300 to the gentleman here. 250, come on, you do want this. You watch every program he's ever done. I know you do. You've got series links, you've got DVDs, <coughs> you've got the whole thing. You loved it with Simon on iPlayer saying, it's on iPlayer now, the whole series. We saw it first time, Simon, it's all right. Uh, 300, you gonna take it off? 300 going once? 350, who was 350 here? Okay, well this is where the action is at, here. <laughs> it's in the mid-range here of the audience. 350 going once, 350. Going twice, are you ready, are you ready? Oh, you want that, there you are, there you are, thank you very much, thank you. Okay, now we're getting to it, two lots. All right, Whew. try this, try this. A two week tiger safari. Going two for two people. Okay, for two people. You, sorry, you have to get your way there. You've got to buy your flights. They wouldn't come in, a bit like the people with the suit. Okay, a two week. And going to the three prime jewels of Madhya Pradesh. Kana, Pench, and of course what you've seen this evening, Vandavgar. Okay, where that was taken, that gorgeous female. Two weeks, two people. You can take it throughout the calendar, okay? It used to be called Land of the Tiger, this one. It's a trip I put together at Exodus many, many, many years ago. It is a trip that, uh, where are you, Arvind? Uh, where are you, your company, Cash Ventures? Uh, can we hear it for you and your father? Because none of this, and that's for you, Mohan. None of this happens. None of it happens without you guys, okay? Please, if you pass on to Mr. Mohan, uh, you, know, you know what I think of your father. And all of you guys and your guides and him and you and... Uh, and Babendra, all of the ones. And I st we still want to beat the hell out of you tomorrow morning in the cricket, but uh, uh, anyway. So, two weeks at any stage in the year, Tiger Safari for two people. Okay, can we have a bid just to start off? Let's just get this going. Three grand, who was that? Okay, three grand. Yeah, decent, Viv, decent. Thank you for that, yeah, thank you. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on a second. Um, just with the holiday, uh, I'm glad to say, um, uh, I've also got a 100 rupee note I'm going to throw in there for a bit of spending money. It's here, Viv. I'll, I'll throw that in as well. Um, very importantly, you're going to take your cameras with you. Look what, this was Simon's idea. Look what we've done here. Forget your rather nasty black Nikon straps, Viv. Uh, uh, okay. We have signed a couple of beaded camera straps for you, okay? So we've got the holiday. We've got for two people to take them when you like. The camera straps, and I'm hearing three grand, really? Uh, who's gonna take that off him? Three grand, is no one gonna take it off him? 4,000, who was that? Uh, at the back. Okay, maybe we can, it, it, we can make it, it just increase the mix a little bit here, because we've spoken about him a couple of times. Uh, Richie from Lenses of, for Hire has very kindly said his and hers, or indeed hers and hers, or his and his, don't mind. Whatever you like, anyone identifying, I don't care, I know. Um, you can have the pick of his arsenal of lenses. You can take the biggest lens you like, each one of you with him. Okay, that's hundreds and hundreds of pounds just straight away. You want to take a 600 millimeter F4 Nikon Canon lens, you can do it with this. 4,000, sorry, who's bidding for this? Uh, where are, do we hear any more? Is that five? Oh, we got one here. Behind you. 10,000 pounds. Oh, yes. That's more like it. 
10 grand. Sorry, uh, Simon, sorry. I was just down in the bleachers there. Anything happening up the top there yet? Not uh, a lot. No, it's not a lot, not. is there? Uh, okay, 10 grand. Oh, my. Um, that was a bit of a jump, wasn't it? Um, <laughs> I was just kind of working my way up through the sort of fluffing <laughs> stage there, and suddenly, boom, it's the end. Uh, okay, 10 grand. Anyone gonna take that off her? <laughs> we still got one more. Anyone gonna take it off her? The holiday straps? The, 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 the 100 rupees? Uh, the, um, the camera straps. Uh, and the camera straps, yes. It's like Brucey, isn't it? The camera straps. Uh, and, um, and of course, the lenses. I think this is probably gonna be yours. Uh, is anyone gonna take that off her? 10 grand, going once. 11. Oh, my. Whoa. Where did that come from? Oh, it's at the top. Oh, my. Simon, look. We shamed them. People often ask me, how do you really make a difference with poaching and all that? You shame them. You shame them. You make those politicians squirm. In Asia, there's nothing they hate more than losing face. Shame them. You were shamed. 11 grand, it's a bidding war. It's a straight, <laughs> it's a straight bidding war before this by this charming gentleman in the open neck blue shirt there and this equally gorgeous lady down here. 11 grand, are you going to take it off? Okay, I'm going to say going once. Going twice. <laughs> okay, girls, I want a big, big, big attack on this gentleman. Don't let him leave. <laughs> I want to see the colour of it. He's got some skin in this. That's impossibly generous. Just to let you know, when you think one of those gas ovens is $35, one of those cattle sheds is $250. Kasha picked up two awards for Exodus yesterday for sustainability, two gold awards. All right, you know, and you certainly know out there, what on earth this is going to go for. You know, how much we're going to get from this. That's a lot, isn't it? 11 grand going once, going twice. I'm going to say sold to the gentleman up there. Now, lastly, lastly, the very last thing. Now, I have posted about this, and hundreds and hundreds and, oops, hundreds of you have mentioned it online. I already have a bid on my phone, several for this, but I think they're derisory. I wrote last week, there are painters of wildlife, and there are wildlife painters, and there is Karen Lawrence Rowe, okay? She is extraordinary. The merest cursory graze across her website, and you will see what I mean, she is remarkably talented. I have loved her work for so long. I know her reasonably well, and I rang her, and I said, Karen, I need you to help me with this. And, you know, she said, Paul, I can't just do this. There's going to be some cost involved. I said, I don't care, Karen. Uh, we need to have you involved at this. Right, first of all, Karen has been ridiculous. I mean, I don't mind telling you that costs hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds to frame because I, you have to do justice to it. That is proper, non-reflective, the whole stuff. Karen said, actually, four days ago, Paul, this is my gift to Worth More Alive. She isn't charging for it. Okay, she is just, please have a look at what she does, uh, okay, because not, she lives in Kenya, her wildlife photographs from Kenya, they're just on a different level. Now, the important thing about this, can we just dim the lights just for a second, please? The important thing about this is, let's remember what's going on here, okay? That's a photo I took with Trevor and Dawn, sat in the front row here in May, okay? You can bring them up now, please. Thank you. That involved 45 degrees, sitting half on the bar of a gypsy jeep, leaning against a tree. For many hours the previous afternoon, we sat and we sweated, and we sat and we sweated, and we heard a couple of warning calls. The following morning, we eschewed the tales of hunting tigers, hunting monkeys up by the water, and we just sat and we waited, and we sat and boom, for about five minutes. I've waited 20 years, 20 years plus, to take that in Band of Gar. It's my favorite tiger photo. I sent Karen 10 photographs, and within a minute, she came back to me. She says, one of these sing, sings to me, and I knew which one it was. That's frankly ridiculous. That, that, that's a watercolor. She, as she said online, she dropped her paintbrush twice on the canvas. You wouldn't notice it with it. That is extraordinary. We're happy. There is nothing attached to this, um, because it's a one-off. It just is. I have had so much correspondence, people saying, oh, no, but I want to be, but I'm not there. I said, well, get on a plane. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I can't come. Right, 
enough preamble. Is somebody going to start a bid for this? We will get it to your house, I promise you. Who is going to take this home with them? Start me with a bid, please. A watercolor, one off. It will not be repeated. It will not be painted again. It will not be printed off. Who's going to take that home with them? Yes. 500, OK. Well, 1,000. Keep it coming, please. This is well below uh, what I've already got. Please keep it coming. 1,200. 15. I was rather hoping it was going to go a bit more than this. This is a one-off. If somebody, yes. 2,000 pounds. One more. Come on, keep them coming, please. One-off picture, which, um, yeah, I, I have a bid for already that I don't want to give it to because they couldn't be bothered to come here tonight. Um, sorry, it's not good enough. We got two grand at the moment for this picture. What more? I can't let it go for that. Surely. That's not even reached the reserve. Who's going to take it off? Maybe remind people what her paintings go for. Yeah, well, um, her last rhino one went for 11 grand. Um, yeah, and, and I saw it, uh, and I'm not surprised uh, either. This is the only tiger shot she has painted. Uh, all right, so this could provide an awful lot for an awful lot. So we're standing at two grand at the moment. Who's going to up it a little bit? Let's move this along. I can't face her if it's only going for this. Uh, I can't. Two and, a half. two and a half. Thank you. Thank you very much. Two and a half grand? I didn't hear that. 3,000. Thank you. Is that you, Ali? Thank you very much. 3,000. Okay, we're limping along a bit now. Uh, okay, anything from the top? I know you've really done an awful lot for your, um, <laughs> for your fraternity up there, and I couldn't possibly ask you uh, to, 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 to bid for this as well, uh, even though you, it's clear you've got decent pockets. But um, uh, it's, um, uh, so uh, where, where were we? Four, three, three grand, was it, uh, Ali? Three? Who's going to uh, add a little more to that? As I say, we will package it up. It will be with you. You need a half-decent... Um, pale wall to, uh, uh, to put that on, um, but I'm sure you can manage that. Um, here it is. I'm going to bring it down here. Uh, We've got to do better than this. On, uh, in fact, it. no, Simon's going to take it, it around. Uh, okay, we're going to do this bit very carefully. Uh, okay, you go so, down and I'll pass it. Yeah, yeah. okay. Okay, yes, I'll good idea. I'll pass it, yeah. And then, and then he's going to walk that around. Yes. Uh, okay, very like kindly. Well match. done. <laughs> okay, have a good look. Non-reflective glass. It almost costs four figures to frame this. Uh, so, most useful thing working hard up here. So we got three grand from Ali for this one-off from Karen. Uh, who's going to add a little bit more to that before it goes? Before I drop it. Before Simon drops it. Who's going? Huh? Three and a half. Is this four thousand? Now we're getting there. Four thousand. It's a worker. Uh, all right, take it off, Ali. She doesn't want it. Uh, 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 come on. Come on, you can afford it. You can't take it with you. Uh, um, uh, come on. <laughs> what do you got? So we're on four grand down here. Very kind. Uh, anything up the top? Anything up the top? Think what this is going to do. Think what you've heard all about it all evening. Four grand. Come on, it's not that much. Uh, as you know, fortunately, it's, a, it's in pounds. It's a fairly lowly currency anyway. Uh, um, four grand. Ali, you're going to take... Oh, I love that when they look to their husband. I always like that. So, mm, should we? Mm, I don't know. You decide. Uh, okay, so four grand at the front here. Currently, you're the closest to it, and it's almost yours, unless someone is going to take it off her. Four grand? Four and a half. Who was that? Was that you? Who was that? Someone around... Was that you, Roz? How very generous of you. Uh, Roz, now this is a... A, a, a very, very good client of me, mine, uh, and um, she's just been, and she, poor girl had bad seasickness in uh, Antarctica, but she's here, and she said four and a half, and she's, <laughs> it will look lovely in your, uh, down at one of the lodges in the lower acre is your property. Uh, uh, I'll do well. She's very posh, Ross. Uh, and, okay, so four and a half grand. I don't think she wants it as much as you do, or indeed you, Ali. Uh, still lower deck, isn't it? Yeah, it is rather. Who's going to do something about this? Four and a half grand? To Roz, in the corner there. Surely. Yeah. Oh, no, no, relax. Take a breath. Uh, all right. Okay. Jess is not going to have your credit card yet. All right. Fourth, okay, it's, oh dear, it's, it's when it goes into these small increments, it goes into pure comedy levels. Uh, 4,600, I think somebody needs to steam in with a bigger bid, uh, uh, and then um, 
uh, and this will this will finish it. Four six. I think we know where this is going, don't we? Four thousand six hundred. You want it badly. Who's going to take it? One off. Never be done again. Off a two. two. You've seen the photograph. Extraordinary. All of the stuff we went through to get that. Just reverse it. That, that's what it was. That's what she's made it into. Extraordinary gifted. 4,600. It's these three ladies, really. Unless somebody wants to steam in. Uh, can you maybe influence some of your less healed uh, friends uh, at, at, at the top there uh, to take it off? Okay. So 4,600 for this remarkable watercolor. Going once. Four eight, Dawn. <laughs> oh, hang on. Four eight now. Oh, Dawn. Well, do you know what? There is a certain symmetry here because she was next to me when I took that photo. This wouldn't have happened if they hadn't have said, no, let's stay here, Paul. So there's something going on there. 4,800, uh, okay, to Dawn. Uh, her husband's not talking to her. Uh, <laughs> and um, that's incredibly generous, uh, but it's an incredible piece of work. Uh, okay, it's all girls at the moment, isn't it? Uh, okay, so come on, fellas. Oh, I know, I know, I know, none taken. Uh, 4,800 going once. Surely it's going to go 200 more. Going to Dawn, going once. Oh, 4,900. Finish it off. Finish it off, Roz. Come on, it's yours then. It's yours then. Okay, don't worry, Simon's not going to write about this in the, in the Independent tomorrow. Uh, okay. All right, 4,900 going once. Five. Five, yes. Come on. That's where we should have been in the start. Yes, okay. of course I will. Okay, what? If Simon will sign. Simon? Okay. No, no, yeah, come on. Okay, you can sign that anyway. Come on, their we'll money's good. The 5,000. Who said five? You, who said it then? Dawn, did you say it? You did. 5,000. You've got a choice now, because I'm going to move this along now. Uh, otherwise, it'll, it'll come with breakfast. Uh, all right, um... Five, uh, all right, 5,000 going once. You done? Yeah. Roz, you done? Ali, you going to get steam in late? 5,000 going once. There's a certain, she was there, wasn't she? Dawn, it's yours. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, please, please. Can we just, just before you head off, just for the last minute, first of all, I would like to thank the hardest working journalist in travel anywhere in the world, Simon, for introducing us tonight. I would also, I'd also like to thank the whole team who have, most importantly, with this whole Worth More Alive thing, the team by the door there. You know, and they have to put up with me. Uh, it's not easy. Uh, it isn't, particularly when I got my teeth into something like this. Uh, but also, most importantly, you guys for showing up, you guys for believing, you guys for really supporting this for many, many, many years. Some people, never mind the auction tonight, which have seen extraordinary generosity. There are some contribution boxes on the way out if you want to. Uh, if you have, those who have bidded successfully, please see Jessica or Rachel outside, or Vicky, I can't remember who it was. Um, but yeah, you have been incredibly generous, and this has gone on a long way. It feels like it's done. Uh, it does, but tigers are still endangered. And lastly, this man. Hang on, um, hang on, hang on, hang on. Can we also say a massive thank you to your incredible family, Donna? Yeah, Josh, thank you, guys. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. And I then, very. And then, and then, can we all please give a massive round of applause for his commitment to wildlife and to tigers and to helping save planet Earth? Paul Goldstein. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, I, um, I look forward to the school run tomorrow morning. And uh, look, you, you, you all have the, 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 the box set, the, the on eye player and everything. Um, Simon is not only my friend, he's an extraordinary television presenter, and he has embraced this right from the word go, from 10 years ago when I first interviewed him and tried to cut him down to size, calling him some dilettante pretty boy presenter. And he was, and actually he is, as he's proved that day, he is anyth anything but, anything but. Uh, and look, I'll be quite clear, we don't have a full house here uh, without him. So thank you so much, Simon Reed. <laughs> Thank you.
Good. Okay, go do battle with the trains. <laughs>